Okay. Okay, let's call this meeting to order. Uh, welcome to the Town of Deerfield the Select Board Board of Health meeting held June 2nd, 2021. Uh, time of convening at 6.02 p.m. Uh, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate and alternate means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on the Frontier Community Action Access Television. Um, Remote meeting connections are noted. Uh, dial in is 312 626 6799. Meeting ID is 911 604 1580. Passcode is 570012. To get the Zoom link, you can go to the Deerfield, uh, Town of Deerfield website and click on the uh, select board meeting and the uh, zoom connection will be there meeting attendees should mute phones use star six for landlines unless asking questions or commenting all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished okay Alrighty. welcome thank you can you hear me okay or yes yep and now you're on mute. So we, yep, now we can hear you. The mouse is going crazy. That's good. <laughs> I just want to say thank you, Dave. That was a good introduction. Yeah. Yes. Okay, uh, we've got a fairly busy uh, agenda for this evening. Mm -hmm. The first thing is uh, we've got a uh, public hearing. Uh, the first one is on the general bylaw, chapter 10, article six section 10-17 capital improvement recommendations do you want me to read that for you um so uh deerfield select board uh board of health notice of hearing june 2nd notice is, is hereby given that the deerfield select board will hold a public hearing on june 2nd at 6 p.m to consider the proposed changes to the deerfield bylaws chapter 10 article 2 Section 10 through 17, capital improvement recommendations by replacing the first sentence in the paragraph, full text of the proposed article may be viewed in the foyer of the municipal offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, or on the town's website under the calendar entry for the date of said hearing. Meetings normally held with the municipal offices are being held remotely um, with alternative means of public access and where required public participation in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020, order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 20. So I'll make a motion to open the hearing. I'll second that. Okay. All, all those in favor? I, Carolyn Ness. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. So uh, Casey, this was just to kind of talk about the um, the discussion uh, of the kind of the dates that we were going to have um, the to see if the town will vote to amend the town of uh, Deerfield general bylaws chapter 10 article 6 uh, section 10 through 17 Notice might be wrong. Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, 1017 it's actually that section is 1017. Oh, thank you. Capital yeah. improvement recommendation. So the question that came up both the capital and finance and the board acknowledges as well acknowledged as well was 60 days is not enough it, it seems like a lot of time but returning a capital improvement plan 60 days prior to town meeting doesn't allow capital to fit the requests into the overall budget mm -hmm. was the upshot and so Essentially what happens is, is capital turns their stuff in first, but it's very difficult to fit it into the later budgets that come in. School budgets aren't due until end of March, beginning of April. A lot of the town budgets aren't sewn up until usually March, end of March, mm -hmm. early April. So by having this turned in 60 days prior, it became difficult to really 
be flexible and, and fit things into the bigger puzzle. Right. So the suggestion initially was to say not less than two weeks prior to annual town meeting. There was some concern at the last finance committee meeting and select board meeting last week that perhaps this isn't enough time. Right. So I discussed this with council and, and this was all ready to be, to go to hearing before that, it, that discussion last week. So, or had been published and the hearing isn't necessary. The hearing is for transition for select board. It, it's mm -hmm. transition. It's to make sure we're, that we're transparent and people understand that. So what probably will come up, I had a conversation with council. We've effectively notified residents, and this is if CIPC wants to make this change. We, it may not be two weeks, it may be more than two weeks, maybe mm -hmm. three weeks or a month. That's been bandied about those two other timeframes. Yep. So essentially what we're asking people to do is consider a change that would allow a better implementation of capital into the overall budget by notice, notifying them that, that we do want to make a change. We yeah. can, if they decide that two weeks is what they want to go with, then that's what would be in the motion. If not, then we can change the motion prior to town meeting to reflect perhaps three weeks. Okay. I mean, that makes sense because I think, you know, just for the general public, it's we always want to put together a capital plan. And when you're planning five years out, you can be kind of generic in what you think you might want to do. And, but for the next coming year, we really don't know what free cash is, you know, what, what the other constraints on the budgets are, the, you know, what, what personnel is going to cost, you know, any other, there's a lot of moving parts and, and to have a capital plan 60 days in, um, you can't really touch again, doesn't really allow for any capital projects to happen. Uh, or exactly. you might plan on a capital thing and realize you don't have the money to do it anyways. Or you might find some extra money right at the end that, oh, we can actually get some flooring done in a building or some, something that we have you know, been wanting to do or something that came up that none of us was really aware of that, that might be emer emergency capital, th something that came up that we really want to fit in quick. So I think I agree that two weeks is a little tough because you really want finance to meet and everybody to kind of get together on this thing. And we've been working really well together this year. I think we all kind of meet together and kind of hash things through together and it seems to be working really well. So two weeks just feels like it's hard to get all those meetings in in time. So we thought maybe 21 days, some people were saying 30 days. I think somewhere in that realm makes sense and I'm fine with either of those. Um, okay. So. That's all my, my thoughts on it. I advocated for um, the two weeks originally because the 60 days was not reasonable. Um, but after thinking about it, I, I do think two weeks is really short. So, uh, so now I'm advocating for 21 days and I mm -hmm. will advocate for that tomorrow at the CIPC meeting, just because um, it does give a little bit more time for finance. It gives a little more time for the select board to and, and, and to fiddle around with her, you know, come to agreement on our finances. But the 60 days, as Trevor said, the 60 days gives us no, I mean, you do all this work and then it, it sits there and it's not reasonable. So yeah. um, no give and take. And, and, we have, and, we're, and we're done too early. So right. anyway, I'm hoping yeah. that people will support that. And the other issue with the two weeks, though, is that, is that um, you know, we need time for Casey and Brenda and it, like to put in the numbers and to adjust the spreadsheet and reprint the warrant for the 10th time. And, and like, hold the hearing. And hold the hearing. There is the a hearing stuff. required in this section of the bylaw. So. Right, right. So it does make sense. You know, 21 days seems more reasonable or 30 at the most. But Yeah. David? Yeah, um, you know, I'm in favor of when we close the warrant. That should be the time frame. Uh, but um, if it's my understanding, Casey, is that if we did approve this right now, as long as it's not more restrictive, we can extend it out to the 21, 30 days at, uh, after the vote tomorrow? We can. So what we can do is we can actually make the change in the motion. I asked CIPC to meet to discuss it so they could settle on a time frame so that we can make adjustments in the motion if they so choose. Okay. And they may, I think they understand what's come up as, again, as you guys have sat in mm -hmm. meetings with other committees, you've brainstormed some of the, the issues that might come up. 
And yep. I think that's been very productive. Yep. So with some reflection, people are noticing that two weeks might be not enough, but maybe three to four is, is a reasonable amount. So we mm -hmm. could make that adjustment in the motion, David. So we don't need to, even really if this gets change. posted, we have yep. to post tomorrow. So even if this gets posted, we can still change the motion on the floor. Okay. So we don't have to make any change here tonight. No, no. Okay. Well, uh, cause CIPC really needs to address that as yeah. the committee. Are there any like public comments or anything like that? Anybody else want to speak on it? I don't see anybody raising their hand. Do I hear a motion to close the hearing? I make that motion to close the hearing. All those in favor? Carolyn's muted. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Hi, <laughs> Carolyn. Okay. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Dave Wolfram. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, hearing uh, closed without any action by the select board at this time. Uh, let's see. Well, you want to move on to the next one? We're two minutes early, but that you know what? It we actually, if you look at your packet, I found out late in the day on this one that we didn't need to have a hearing on it. Personnel actually has to have a hearing on it. Oh. So I rescheduled for all of them. But okay, good. for transparency's sake, I can explain what sure. what will be presented to personnel. Um there's that um, Trevor, I'm working <laughs> I'm on it, I know. So for purpose of, uh, purposes of discussion, I'll just recap what was a, a more concise version of what was presented at last week's information session. So the town is in process of finalizing a classification compensation study, which recommends adjustments to position descri descriptions and it provides an evaluation of the positions themselves, both internally and externally. And externally is really the employment market. And what's come out of that, the substantial completion is that we should make a change to a different grade and step system. And that change could happen in FY23. And so part of this, the reason we say FY23 is the economic conditions don't support us making a substantial change in our classification compensation plan. So an incremental approach over a two year period made more sense. Right now we really are still in very restrictive and constrained economic conditions for the town because the expenses of COVID have really pushed us up against a wall in some ways. <clears throat> uh, grant funds notwithstanding, there have been a lot of expenses that nobody anticipated just to keep things moving. So with those economic constraints, that suggestion of transitioning over a two year period, the recommendation was submitted to the personnel board, the select board and to the finance committee that we maintain the current plan structure, six grades and 10 steps, adding a 3% increase across the board for all employees and no step advancement except for a few specific positions that are paid well below market value or where changes to duties and or statutory criteria indicate a higher level of accountability. In other words, in review and evaluation of their position descriptions and the requirements to perform, there's, there are indicators that some of these positions should be at a higher level based on the expectation and requirements within the entire structure of the state too. Statutory requirements is what that means. And some positions really were hired at a very low level. So making that adjustment over that two year period makes sense. The study included the reevaluation of the job description. So we will continue with that. Personnel will work on that once we receive them back. And so this change in FY22 is the same plan structure exists. But in FY23, we would transition to implement a seven grade system with 12 steps across the board. And that system would include dropping the first three steps that we see in our 10 step system we have now, dropping those first three steps because those are well below market. Mm -hmm. The higher end of our compensation plan is within the market value. And so by creating this, this, 
different grade structure and step structure, we hope to capture the consistency of our employment process and those positions while understanding, and this is the biggest piece of it, understanding that municipal government has a limitation of two and a half percent increase on the levy, which includes payment to employees. And so we have to be very judicious, especially after having experienced COVID, about how we apply those strictures to the employment process and, and to pay up and payroll. So the seven grade 12 step structure would include a two to 3% increase in each step. And it would be a policy decision as you all have made in the past to either award a cost of living adjustment or not, but that could be included for all employees. And it wouldn't push that compensation plan into a place where it might not be sustainable for a long period of time, which is really what we're experiencing. Have I muddied the water sufficiently? No. Nope. You could do a better job in muddying it if you want. <laughs> I could. I tried to ratchet it back. Yeah. No, no, that was good, Casey. Yeah, that uh, you know, a number of us have heard and seen that the plan several times now, and I think um, as a board we probably understand it quite well. But it's the town employees that probably don't. So, um, let's see. Uh, early for uh, the meeting with Chief Smith, so. Uh, um, Zach, you know what, Dave? No, Zach, Zach is here. Oh, yeah. Zach is here. Yeah. Hello. Good evening. <laughs> I'm just um, finishing this, the uh, bite on this snack here. So give me a second. Right. You, you, you called me early. I was like, I got one more bite. I, I'm sure of it. <laughs> hey, you're not supposed to bring it if you can't share it with everybody. <laughs> right. right. This, how wonderful is Zoom that I no longer have to share anything with anyone? <laughs> Uh, All right. We're taking a debit memo, though. So the next time we run into you. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, I'm just going to use this soon. I'll change my screen name on Zoom. You won't know it's me. Oh, OK. <laughs> um, so I've submitted a uh, letter to the select board. Uh, this is going to um, turn into a regular thing. This is housekeeping as far as the financial side goes on medical billing and revenue. Um, so this is going to be my boilerplate and it'll just be updated this request moving forward. I don't yet know how often that'll happen. Um, probably quarterly, I imagine, but we'll see how it plays out. Basically, uh, for the viewers at home, uh, medical ethics and regulation and law requires that we bill everybody the same amount for the same service uh, to do otherwise would be unethical and illegal. Um, so what we do is we bill at the level that we know the most premium Cadillac insurance will pay. And that's what our bill is for everybody. Obviously, um, some people are on fixed incomes. They have Medicare, Medicaid. They have an otherwise inability to pay because of um, life experiences or, or, or situations or things like that. So what happens is we bill at X, but we anticipate that our collections will be lower than that. That is standard medical billing um, business. And so at a certain point, these amounts that we build, we never expect to collect. We do need to write off to get them off the books. Um, so what we have here is the um, just a formal request to write off a certain, certain por portion of our uh, past due debt or our past due revenue that we haven't collected uh, to get them off the books and make um, Brenda Hill's life a lot easier. Um, so in this case, uh, I've gone back for, um, we did, and I think last year, maybe a little bit before, we did everything up to 2014 when South County was created. So we did all the past year foot EMS stuff. Uh, this request here is everything from 2014 forward that is older than six years old. So South County EMS, we have a board of oversight and they have reviewed and approved a write-off policy that governs all of this. So that's so we can try to be as objective as possible. And I've gone through all of this, these past due amounts and anything that's older than six years per our policy is written off as uncollectible. That's, that's standard. Um, so that for that uh, group 
uh, we're looking at 57 bills that are greater than six years old. Um, and the total is $64,875.02. Um, some of those bills uh, might be because, um, again, you know, they're on Medicare, Medicaid. We collected a certain portion and the federal government says we will never pay the rest of that. Um, some of these might even be uh, from people who were traveling through town um, and we, we got a bad address or they moved or something like this but they're all greater than six years old. So these are all funds that we, um, we know that we will not collect. So um, that is that. Um, there is nothing in this list that will, uh, per our policy would be sent to collections or reported to a collections bureau because um, there's nothing that falls under that per our policy. Um, so I, I would ask that the select board approve this right off uh, once that happens. It's a list that includes some confidential uh, personal information like names and addresses yeah. and dates of service. So I have that list separate. Um, assuming that you approve this, that list will be forwarded to Comstar, our billing company, um, and then they will process that right off on their end, and then they will forward a reconciliation to myself and um, Brenda Hill, who will uh, balance out our town books at the end. Thank you, Zach. I, I just would like to say that um, the majority of our write-offs are because of Medicare and Medicaid. Um, you know, we, we um, have, you know, people that that's what they have for medical insurance. And the difference what Medicaid, Medicare pay and what we charge, as Zach explains, is the main thing. And so um, the Board of Oversight does review all this and um you know so it, it's not this is not the first time to look at it We've, you yeah know, yes that, that's an excellent point carolyn and i will say we have a separate process that assures that our collections are at or better than the standard we have alerts that get triggered if for some reason our collections don't seem like where they should be uh as a rule, South County EMS, the town of Deerfield is doing very, very well with that. So yeah, this, I say it in the letter that these, any sort of write-offs is not an indication um, that we are not doing our diligence as far as documentation or timely billing. And, and, and we do have a, you know, separate contract for collection if for the ones, the items that do not, you know, aren't straightforward like Medicare, Medicaid difference and so. Correct. And, and per the policy, those would be cases in which um, they're above a certain threshold. So typically it's a full amount, not just like a copay that somebody couldn't pay, but um, they were, um, they owe $2,000, they have an ability to pay and they've just refused to respond to bills so far. Th those are those types of fringe cases, um, the rare ones that they are. Yeah. Thank you, Zach. Um, are there any other bills? Uh, are these all? Uh, are there any bills still outstanding that are six years old or older, or is this all of them? This is the totality of everything that is older than six years. Okay. So, um, yep. starting whatever the cutoff date was, this it might have been June first of whatever yep. of twenty twenty. Moving sure. forward, um, it's going to get a little bit more muddy. The next round you'll see will probably be like the first batch of very clear, obvious ones per yep. our write-off policy um, and we'll whittle away. Um, I don't know, I, I, these don't accumulate that quickly. So I anticipate probably revisiting this type of thing, like I said, quarterly or something and we'll do a yeah. batch at a time then. Um, okay. But this is just write-offs. Yeah, okay. older than six years. All right. Good. Well, uh, any other questions anybody oh. has? I don't see any hands raised. I, I would make no? a motion. Uh, I, I give the chair a motion to um, approve the write-off um, for South County. Will... Oh, you know, and I was going to say I'll second that, oh. Carol. <laughs> uh, based on based on the um, the the six sixty four thousand eight hundred seventy five dollars and two cents for bills dating back um, as old as July first, two thousand fourteen. Right. Yep, so. I second. I hear Thank any you. further discussion? Nope. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. 
you're muted again, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Thank you. The kids are yelling in the tub, so I'm, oh, trying, I see. I'm trying to keep the background <laughs> voice. I just, um, I also, I just wanted to um, take a moment to just say how proud I am of South County EMS while we're talking about this. Um, they, they've been an amazing help uh, to um, many in the community, and I can speak for one. And uh, I just think the professionalism that they show up to the house with and care that they have um, are truly uh, top notch. And um, I'm just so proud that they're part of our community. Thank you, Zach, for your leadership. I also want to just add that, um, you know, the, the, throughout all the clinics that we did this year, um, they, you know, Zach was able to get, um, you know, extra crews on to, to participate. And, you know, they came and they were yes. wonderful and they, and had they helped. Friends, and they had to transport a couple of people and it was yeah. really, really nice. And um, yep. I just wanna say thank you too. Um, yeah. it, it makes me feel so good that they are an important part of our community. The, uh, uh, I'll vote aye so we can okay. <laughs> approve the motion. Thank you, and, sorry. You know, being part of the emergency services in the town of Deerfield for a couple of days. Um, you know, I am very proud of what we have now. I mean, uh, I had the unfortunate part to have to be transported by these fellows a while ago. <laughs> um, and despite my mouth, they treated me well. Um, so it, uh, it's kudos to them. Um, and I couldn't be prouder of the service that we are offering to the three towns currently. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you she very much. A little it's, iffy, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it, it really is an honor, um, and I'm thankful that uh, the town of Deerfield and its people have empowered us to create such a great um, EMS system and a, a department dedicated to that. So, um, you guys make it easy to provide this service. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Zach. Have a good night. Our next hearing is at 6.45, so um, let's move on to... Uh, wanna Did go you on? guys take your roll call? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I just... Usually I catch it and type it up. Yeah. Sorry. I don't, I don't think I remember them saying their names. Oh, when, sorry. When oh, just, okay. For the Hi, right Carolyn. Out. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. All right. Now we're official. Thank you. Motion <laughs> carried 3 zero, zero. Thank you. So do we want to go on to select and reports and announcements? Um, I just I just wanted to say um, the Hatfield uh, uh, parade was, even though it was rainy, it was really nice. And happy birthday, Hatfield. Yes, that um, was great. That yeah. was really great. And thank you, David, for the balloons. Yeah. <laughs> we decked out the Volvo and Carol and I rode in style down there with uh, some decals <laughs> on the guard. And, uh, it was really nice. I mean, I was so, um, so proud to, to represent Deerfield there. And uh, we had, we had the fire, fire truck in the back and um, just the people were so kind, uh, you know, to, to everybody going by and they were really excited to celebrate their town, even though it was raining, everybody was out under tents and kids and uh, it was just such a great time and I can't wait to invite them up to Deerfield in a couple of years to do our celebration and it's, it's nice to be um, have great neighbors like that. So, yes, and we got notification of Waitley's two fiftieth on June yes. twenty, June twenty sixth, twenty twenty two. Yes. So, we have yep. to pay attention. Ours, ours is going to be in June of twenty three, just in case people want to fill out their calendars early. Yep. Yeah. Um. Any other announcements? Okay. Um, I'd like to make one for those of the uh, residents of Deerfield. If you haven't noticed that there's been some construction on Elm Street and Five and Ten, uh, we're asking you to be extra careful. Yeah. In these zones. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, we just had an officer that was struck by a car, um, and you know. There are days that we actually have 11 officers out doing details in that area. 
because there's so much good stuff going on. So uh, we just ask for your patience. Uh, this is a Commonwealth uh, project. This is not a town of Deerfield project, but uh, we're just enhancing that corridor for us. And uh, you know, I just ask that everybody just be patient and be careful. Great point. Thanks, David. Do we do we want to go over the um, the wastewater treatment product uh, project debt service before our hearing? Do we have time for that? This is fairly routine. Yep. The this is the debt service that's been discussed for quite some time for the wastewater treatment plant. Ban. Wait, no. I get these confused. Yes. <laughs> All right. It's the your band. turn, Trevor. It's the ban. It's the ban. <laughs> yeah. So we're going out. We have one ban, which is, um, um, uh, you know, we we apply for uh, short term loans. So there's bonds and there's bans. Bans are a short term um, uh, note that we that we get a really good rate on and. Um, you know, we do one for the school roof and we kind of wrap a lot of projects into one and uh, it's coming due at the end of June. And um, so we'll be taking out a much larger one could, because we're going to start, well, one, we're gonna pay off the clarifier project that we had um, taken the emergency repair at the, at the South Deerfield wastewater treatment plant. And then we're also, um, uh, we obviously need funds because our project has started at the um, at the same plant for all the other stuff that trailers are showing up and they're going to get started, you know, scraping the ground and getting to work. So um, that's a long project, but we, so we will, we will borrow each year short term notes um, and they'll kind of get larger until we actually close on a loan with USDA at the end of the project. So once that project is kind of got to the point where it's, it's finishing up, we'll turn in all the bands uh, and apply for a 40 year note with USDA at a, at a pretty low rate. Um, but the bands right now are, are very low, um, which is you know great because the market, oh, thank you for sharing. So they're, they're really great right now. So you know we've had um, the one band um, it is due as you can see at the top was the 852,000. Um, and then we had, um, we have the the larger one that we that we will be getting at the end of June, and that'll go for the year, and that's about nine 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 million three hundred and fifty, and then that'll get rolled over again into the fifteen million. They just kind of grow as they go until we until we kind of close the close the whole job out and, and get a larger, you know, again the larger loan. So that that fifteen million seven ninety one one hundred five will get pulled out a year from now. Um, in 2022 and it will be you know due june 8th of 2023 and then hopefully the project will be finished up and, and we'll move move from there so um the interest rates have been have been pretty good on on that amount and um again we don't have it yet because you know it has to go out um so we'll have that fairly fairly soon um and then i guess you can see all the different you know the the uh, principal payments and the short-term interest, and then the, you know, all the other interest payments until we get out to the end of the project, which is like, you know, twenty million dollars. So, about nineteen something to twenty million once you factor in all the interest payments. So um, that is it. So Barbara is just going to go out, and she just does, just doesn't need to, but notifies the select board each time she's going to go out for a ban, and this is really kind of notice on that. And if you scroll up a little bit more, this kind of just shows, yeah, I mean, oh, the other way. Yep, this shows a little bit of our, you know, our first ban was 852. The second one um, is 7 million eight something. Com you know, if you combine that all together, um, that's what, what the ban will go out for this time. And then it just shows the amount of money that will be going out at the same time and what our cash flow will be. And, uh, on the first phase of the project. So that's it, just to kind of get everybody up to speed on what we're doing. 
Well, I think we have to do, the board has to vote to approve the bid documents and sign off at their convenience, oh. Trevor. Good, do we have, I don't think I have that here, but um, okay. So I'd make a motion to approve the bid documents. I don't think we did, but uh, maybe we do. I will second that. Um, I, I'm not sure. I, I didn't I didn't realize that we had to do that either. I don't think, I think we have they're, to vote on that. They're, they're on my desk, I think. Oh. Huh. Okay. Right? Yeah. Right, Casey? Well, yes, they are. Okay. Then I guess we do. So I will I will second it. Okay, this is Carolyn. Yes, they are sitting on our desk. The I don't usually get scans of these. Um this is the wastewater treatment plant ban. Right. And again, we don't have the ban yet because I think it's it's out to bid, right? I don't think she'll secure that yet. Well, this is the ban for the 554,400, 554,000. That's not a mouthful. That's the school roof, right? No, this is the wastewater ban. The interest rate is 0.380%. It's a good rate. And it is. It's an excellent rate. We've been really lucky lately. Greenfield, is that through Greenfield Cooperative? They've been really competitive. They have been really competitive. Uh, hold on. I'm just checking. No, it wasn't Greenfield Cooperative. Who, do, who is it with? It's Century Bank. Really? Hmm. Yeah. I didn't so, know it came back yet. I haven't talked to Barb, but I knew that. Well, keep in mind, we have to finish up paying for the clarifier and. Right. So With is the, that, so that 500 and something, what is that amount for that? Cause that doesn't ring a bell. The, yeah, exactly. I, th I think it, it's nine. I know that the band, the band that we will be getting so is the, about nine and a half million. And I know that she'll be rolling in probably the school roof and some other things into that larger, you know, that larger band. Um, I almost think that is the school roof, Casey, isn't it? Because that otherwise is too small. Mm -hmm. For it's too small. Well, we're for doing two issuances this month. That's okay. the thing. We're doing two issuances that. this month. So the piece that we've got pieces and parts here. Right. The 554. I don't have, I'm looking, I'm I'm literally yep. combing the documents to see if I can find it. But we had two band issuance, band issuances this month. One's yep. for the 10 million. Yep. And then we have, I bet you're right. I bet this is the score. If I might have, see, I don't see all the documents ahead of time. So it's right. hard for me to write it down um, without right. having all of that in front well, of me. Cause I don't do any of the, the, the loan I'm, documents like Barbara I'm pretty, does. I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is correct. So from, from Barbara, so mm -hmm. oh, I, it I'm, is. I'm yeah. okay with voting it. I just didn't think we were voting. Yeah. Do we have so. any further discussion on it? Nope. All those in favor? I Charlie McDaniel. I Carolyn Ness. I Dave Wolfram. Motion carried three zero zero. Okay. 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 Um, you want to go to June nineteenth? approval so i'll be quick the at the at the meeting of the finance committee and select board last week it was requested of me to split the two documents or the two the two okay. votes in the mm -hmm. holidays into two different articles which i did and made some changes so that personnel board can hold their hearing about all these changes and the select board did hold a hearing about it, but with the change, I would ask the select board to consider approval of adding this holiday for all benefited employees, including those in collective bargaining agreements and other contracts to mirror the language the personnel board will be addressing next week. And this is through conversation with council and 
the discussion that sort of evolved last week in re a further review of the warrant. Does this already take effect um, because the governor already approved this? It takes effect by virtue of two things. The governor approved Juneteenth last year, but also personnel bylaws. And so this is part of the evolution of this. Personnel bylaws take effect immediately. They're not reviewed by the AG's office. So that was, that was part of the nuance here that, that I had some trouble with and had some conversations with counsel about. And so, so we refined the language. So because this was voted on prior to Juneteenth, then it's already in effect then, right? No, the town, we would be requesting that the town add this as a paid holiday. So Juneteenth exists on the state level. Municipalities are not required to pay right. Juneteenth, but personnel board in review of Juneteenth, their recommendation was to add it as a paid holiday. There's some refining language because we have collective bargaining agreements. And so what I'm asking the board to consider is um, mirroring the language that we refined <clears throat> from our original proposal, which was one article and addressing adding the holiday for all benefited employees, including those in bargaining agreements. So, right. So I don't think we, we would know we would notify the bargaining agreements that were this consideration is being put forward to town meeting. Do do we know? Um, right. And, and, and I guess in the next. Uh, you so would address are, again. Are. You're right, Trevor. You're on the right track. We would address this instead of impact bargaining it we would address this in the next rounds of contract negotiations. Correct. I will say that in some in, um, anecdotal conversations with Darius, I think the school's gonna be moving in that direction as well. So however they handle it, I have looked at the school, the mm -hmm. teacher contracts and the IA contracts, but I don't specifically see a notation. It's, I think they may be starting to address it. I know many towns are starting to address it in various ways. To be honest with you, I didn't get the impression from the personnel board that that this was something they wanted to see the select board um, treat anyone differently. And right. so they'll have an opportunity to talk about that. But it's been my impression from various conversations that this, the idea behind Juneteenth is to recognize the end of slavery in the country. And so we recognize it across the board. Um, this is a choice to not impact bargain, which could cost the town significant money as well. Because the impact bargaining requires going back to the table. We will be going back to the table with at least, at least one union at this point before the end of the year probably. And we'll be finishing up our collective bargaining negotiations with the newer union that we, ha we now have. By approving this right now, that means the 19th of this month will actually be a paid holiday. If it's approved by town meeting. Yeah, okay. If it's approved not, by town not meeting. Not this year though. Not yeah. Yes, oh, this oh, year, that's oh, the this thing. this year, I see what you're saying. This year, yeah. Uh, and so the, but the question is, have we budgeted enough to cover that for every, in everyone's budget? You know what I mean? Because it's, it's not, not an a, impact. Yeah. I actually checked with council on this and reviewed contracts. Um, it's in a one particular contract, which is the one that is finalized that I deal with quite a bit. Um, there's no time and a half impact on this. So essentially it's a paid holiday or a banked holiday for that particular union membership. For us, it's a paid holiday it's an additional paid holiday and this was finance committee's consideration of it last night what it would be it's an additional paid holiday and so they think that that has a significant impact to be honest with you in my conversation with some employees one you know brenda and i have talked about it several times in the municipal world most municipalities and when we talk about municipal market 
we're talking about municipal market, not necessarily the mm -hmm. larger employment market. Mm -hmm. We do not, we're not on the same level as the private sector. So holidays and benefits were often the draw to get municipal employees. Hi, mm -hmm. Jeff. The, so one thing that, that is useful to remember is that benefits piece is not the same draw it used to be to be that our benefits, benefits packages, I mean, insur health insurance and other types of benefits used to be much, much more competitive. It's less competitive than it used to be. And part of that is just the health insurance market itself has really decimated our ability to compete on that level. So one thing that's left to us is holidays. And there are several times that we've noticed that, you know, the holiday is the recharge day. And in this case, the holiday is much more impactful because it really is celebrating something that has not been acknowledged. And personnel was clear about that. They wanted this to be acknowledged as something that's important to dismantle systemic racism. So um, I, I guess my only issue was just that I wanted to make sure that it wouldn't affect budgets that we have already i mean i didn't know if we would institute this in next year or it had to be had to as soon as it voted it and that's the if town meeting approves it it would go into effect this year because that's what there's no statutory requirement for the ag to approve it this is, is it, it's a personnel bylaw they don't look at those but is it is it is there an ability for us as a town to say beginning fy 2022 or however it works the fall the next year you could but we didn't frame it that way we didn't frame it that way personnel board their recommendation was to institute it this year and when in, it became a holiday last year right but I, i'm so it wouldn't change the budget in any way it's not changing the budget it's not changing the budget okay. what it is is there's one day that there's an extra day off for People that's fine. I just want town. to make sure it didn't it didn't cause more. Um, well, you know. for our twenty four seven agencies, both the scams and the police, um, it does affect a budgeting because it's time and a half, isn't it? No, it isn't. It it isn't time and a it half. It is not time and a half. Okay. They so can the take that day another day. They can take that day, bank that holiday, take it another day, or. So if they work it, yeah, it's not time and a half. I checked. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure it didn't have a, a monetary impact this, this year. That it does, but it's a productivity budget. impact to some extent. And the collective, uh, what this does is it, it, so understand when you impact bargain, there's a cost to both the town and the union for the impact bargaining. Mm -hmm. Am I right, David? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we're making a choice to present this to everybody without impact bargaining it, we will address it by physically adding it to the holidays in the collective bargaining agreements that exist or in other contracts that exist that don't reference this holiday. Mm -hmm. And equitably pass that out to everybody for the purpose of them recognizing this is something that really needs some recognition and is part of a, a, an overall effort to dismantle racism and recognize that we need to dismantle racism. I think that was how I, I heard it from the personnel board. And I've heard it from several other people that have discussed it, so. Okay. Okay, so an approval tonight, Casey, is just to have it put onto the warrant. Basically. An approval tonight coincides with the language that is written on the warrant that will be addressed by personnel board next week. Okay. All right. Do we have any further make, discussion? No, I make that motion. I'll second it. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay. You're cutting out, David. I didn't know if you would ask for a vote. Ask for a vote. Oh, okay. And I put the paper over the speaker and it cuts me out. <laughs> so I, I'll vote in affirmative and just-, just... Who's seconding? Who seconded? I did. Yeah. Who seconded? David. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Yep. I thought I heard that. Yep. And, you know, I'll vote in, in favor of this as well. Just, I mean, again, because I, I think it's an important day. Oh, yeah. Thank you. 
to recognize and um, just a second. And, and hopefully for people to take action on this day and not just to treat it as a day off, but to actually exactly. help and focus. You know, there's many days where people have a day of action to go out and do things for the holiday to um, to better, better people's lives. So in, in any respect, so that's my vote. Since um, the 19th is a Saturday, that means um, it will be Friday the 18th? Is up Friday. Okay, observe that day, okay. Um, I, Carolyn. I think I heard. Motion, motion carries three zero zero. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next thing uh, we have a, a hearing. Class two license, uh, dealer's license. You want me to read that, David? Sure, you can. If I can find it again. <laughs> Bear with me. I can read it. Oh, here we go. Uh, the Deerfield Select Board uh, hereby give notice in accordance to Mass General Law Chapter 140, Section 59, that K-Dog Auto Sales 7, uh, excuse me, 670 River Road, Deerfield, Mass, has filed an application with the Select Board to run an internet sales only Class 2 used dealer, used vehicle dealer business in, com uh, in compliance with the Massachusetts uh, general laws, the select board will pub hold a public hearing at the municipal offices at Main Meeting Room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, on May 19th, uh, 2021. We, we extended it uh, to this date um, at 6.45. And um, meetings are normally held in the offices are being held remotely by all the same means we've read twice tonight. So, welcome. Uh. Do we want to hear from Mr. Bobo? I'm here. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, do you have any additional comments for the board? Uh, no, I'm just, I, I pretty much covered everything that the requirements that I was told I needed to meet. Um, as far as the letter that um, from the repair shop, I'm still working with them on that. He has to write it up. That's all. Okay. And as far as, as far as my bond goes, that's all in place. Uh, I spoke with them today. They called me and wanted to know where I stood with it. And I told them that, that I'm just waiting to, to get a final decision here before I spend the additional $250 on that. Dave, you're muted. Uh oh. <laughs> Dave, we can't hear uh -oh. you. Oh, there we go. Now I can. I don't know why it cut now. I can't wait till our own person again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is everybody says I don't talk, but when I do talk, nobody can hear me. All yeah, right. <laughs> um, do I hear any comments from the select board? Well, you know, so I've been I've been uncomfortable, you know, moving forward with this um, class two license. I understand that he has an ability to do the home business. Um, there and then it's really you know it's up to the select board whether we feel comfortable issuing a class two license in a residential area and for this business um we reached out for some clarification from council and i'm trying you know it, it's been a short week you know and I, i'm trying to understand a little bit um you know when you get a, a, a response from a lawyer it's what you would expect it, so it's a little hard to understand. Um, and I think, so what, what, what I think it says is that, um, you know, kind of based on the, the decision by the zoning uh, enforcement officer, um, if the business follows all the regulations of a home-based business, um, then he has the ability to do that there. And it's up, you know, it's up to be enforcement based on those those criteria. 
And then it's up to the select board to decide whether we want to also on top of that provide a class two license. Um, you know, blessing that business with a class two license. So he has a dealer plate to do that stuff. And if we do that, we can put any restriction we want on the business. Um, at least that's what I think I'm understanding from them um, that it could be, they're not, you know, uh, co-mingled. You can do either, you know, either one. Um, and I think, I just feel like, you know, at this point I, I would, want to understand and write out those restrictions um, and really understand this this information from the attorney a little bit better before I voted in favor um, or, or voted against. I just feel like it. Um, I'm, I'm, oh, go ahead. Somebody want to speak? I'm, I'm pretty clear on what the restriction. Of course you hung How to repair the vehicles here. The the. You know, you can't do any business here. Uh, you can't display the vehicles here, which I fully understand that. Yep. No, I know you do. Yep. And I think, um, you know, you weren't going to have customers there. I mean, all, oh. all those items were going to be um, that were listed um, in those restrictions for a home-based business there um, would need to be part of the uh, part of the conditions that we would put on a license, but I'm not sure how the other members feel about doing a license at all for, for a, for a car dealership in a residential area. It just seems really, you know, it's outside of the norm. And I, and I understand it's outside the norm and your business is really outside the norm. It's, yeah. um, you know, laws really haven't caught up with today's, you know, uh, e-commerce and. Well, I, I currently you're allowed by right in the state to sell, I think it's four or five vehicles without even having a license, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, I, I buy impound cars. I drive them. I run yeah. them for a year or two. And then I, for something else comes along, I sell it. Sure. And then I get the other car and yep. the sales that I pretty much do with these things are done on the internet. Nothing yep. even currently is sold out of my yard. Right. So I'm very well aware and I know what the market can support. Yeah. So that's why I'm comfortable with what the restrictions would be because it would really the sales are done via phone, internet. Then you leave the location, you go meet the customers at their location or a neutral location to conduct the business. The the big thing that that I think is is of concern with with the town uh, or the committee members is the the ability to repair the cars which i can fully support and, and submit a letter uh with the garage that I, I plan on having doing the work so you know with all that contingent for for me that's not my that's not my biggest concern my biggest concern is that it, that it um that it kind of morphs into something more than one car on your property at a time that it yeah. morphs into like multiple vehicles and I, I, and so that would be one of the conditions that we we would need to Certainly. put on it mm -hmm. um I understand and so, that. so really that's my, my main concern is is now everybody that wants to apply for a class two license out of their house in any single you know any section in town in the ra district would have that we'd be setting that precedent and that it makes me a little bit nervous uh to do that without really thinking through those those um, restrictions and conditions that we would put on that license if we did it. I just feel like I would need a little more time to understand exactly what the lawyer is saying and then um, and really to write out those things before I was a yes vote. Um, not that it, you know I'm trying to hold you up at all, but I truly I mean it I is a, a, I, I a have a full time job with the state already. So <laughs> <laughs> so you got enough going on. Um, <laughs> I just, I just, you know, I really wanted to think about yeah. this because every time I've made a decision as a select board member that wasn't fully felt like, oh yeah, I know this and I understand it very, very well, it comes back to bite me. And I just really, you know, for your sake, I don't want to, you know, yank you around on, on your business plan, but I also, I really want to think about what I've heard from the, cust you know, from the residents and what the precedent we would be setting if, if we did go and do that. 
Um, by right, you are allowed one vehicle, unregistered vehicle already. Yep. And I, I guess that's, I mean, my concern is, you know, how do we police this? Um, you know, we just don't have staff um, to be able to, um, you know, make sure that you only have one car at a time. Right. You know, uh, giving a license is, is precedent setting. Right. And, and so I'm, I am really concerned about that. And um, I mean, there is also, you know, there is another home business at that residence. And so it almost becomes then a commercial, you know, um, and rather than residential. So I, I guess that's my concern as well. Um, you know, it's just the next step of going to the class two license just seems to me um, really a, a, a huge step in a residential area. And um, I, I, I feel like we have to have some kind of concrete way to police, um, you know, and, and make sure that, you know, vehicle is stored someplace. I mean, you're, the, the horse barn is really small and it's in the floodplain and I think it's a potential floodplain. And, you know, I, I'm just not sure how we're gonna handle that tight corner. And like I said, another, it is already a home business there at that location. So it's- But it's, there, there's no customers coming and going from here. I'm sitting in front of a computer. It's, it's a different animal entirely. I do understand that. I, get, I definitely yeah. get that. I do too. It's just, it's just that the, the class two opens it all up. And I, you know, I'm not sure we can limit it uh, successfully. That's my concern. Um, Bob, the, the zoning guy is, is fully planning on enforcing that um, is what I was told. But why would I go outside of those parameters and jeopardize what I'm allowed to do? And, and with a potential of losing my license. And then at that point, try to get a license back. Because once you have uh, a, a dealer license pulled, for, for a restriction or whatever, it's it's that much harder to, to get that license back. I've had two dealer licenses in the past. I'm, I'm well aware of restrictions and yeah. getting in, in trouble with a dealer license. You have to have everything documented. Um, you know, it's, it's nothing new to me. Mm -hmm. And my plan is not to keep it here for very long either. Uh, this is gonna allow me to get up and running and then my my intention is I'm I'm looking at a commercial property. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, it's in another town. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I'd not going to help you with this boat. No, <laughs> I'd, I'd love to stay in Deerfield. I mean, I live here, but <laughs> yeah, uh, there's there's a piece of property that's been taken by taxes in the town of Greenfield that is coming up for auction, which is within within my budget, and it's yep. a commercial piece of land. So uh, mm -hmm. it, you know, my plan is to move forward. Get this thing up and running, and then move once yeah. once they get things established. Okay, uh, my opinion on this is you're well within your rights to have a home business. Uh, you're well within your rights to have one unregistered vehicle on your property. Um, the class two is brings in the restrictions of the repairs and things like that, but. Um, being that it is an internet business and everything like that, I do not see the need for the class two for that piece of property because you're well in your rights to basically do the business that you're talking about right now. Yeah. So, you know, you don't need the class two license to continue. The only time you would get into problem is when you violate the current zoning and have more than one unregistered vehicle on the property. The, the, big, the big thing with the dealer license versus no dealer license is as a dealer, the, the sales tax issue. The dealers do not pay the sales tax. When you purchase a vehicle, you're exempt from that. And then when you sell the vehicle to the new owner, they then register the vehicle, title it and pay the sales tax. The dealership doesn't do the tax. So as me as a private individual, if I buy a $10,000 car, the state taxes me on that. And then mm -hmm. if I plan on selling that car, I, I have to eat that tax. It, it basically has to, I have to increase the cost of my car 
by that amount of money to recoup my money. Right. And then also you, you have that four to five car restriction per year. My, my intention is to maybe do one, one or two cars every couple months. Because I do have a full-time job at UMass. I'm not able to, you know, conduct this 24-7. Sure. So that's another thing. It's not going to be, you know, an eight-hour-a-day thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, then I would suggest that we um, come up with uh, how we want to word the class two um, to restrict it. Because I, like I said, I don't feel very comfortable just doing a class two without seeing the restrictions. Um, I'm, I'm really, I think totally it, fine. yeah, I, I, I think it is precedent setting. So um, I, I, again, I apologize for jer jerking you around or seemingly jerking you around. I, I, you know, I want you guys to be comfortable with what you're doing as a town, um, you know, and moving forward uh, with the understanding that there, there's whatever restrictions you decide to put on, on there. I think I can abide by those without a problem. Right. Uh, you know, especially Stated. only doing one car at a time. It's, it's really not going to be an issue. So you, you can take so, the time, what you need okay. to, to write it out whatever you're comfortable doing um, and then I'll supply you with the letter in the bond uh, upon approval and then do whatever you got to do. So I would make a motion to uh, continue the hearing um, until our next meeting while we can study truly uh, <clears throat> you know Excuse make the me. decision at that point whether we'd want to move forward with a, an approval or not. Uh, Jennifer? Not the next meeting because you're scheduled for um, town oh, meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. Town yes. So the next regularly scheduled select board meeting. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Right. Is, is that going to be enough time though with town meeting and everything? Uh, I mean, if not, we can continue it again. But I think I, I would make an effort, you know, to try to re really get to the bottom of this and and move forward. And if we had to continue it again, we would. But um, that's okay. up, up to you though. I, I, I'm, I am concerned about it being precedent setting and, um, uh, and how we're gonna police it. So how we need to get definitive um, definition that from the lawyers that and this, is ne the, because we're approving this, if we approve it, that this isn't gonna be precedent setting. And that, I, that is concerning to me. And it, and it is concerning to me that we, you know, I know we can say Bob is going to police it, but how? How, yeah. how are we going to do this? You know, Carolyn, can can I make a suggestion that we say enforcement because it's just the, yes. the zoning right. zoning enforcement officer. Yeah, um, that's perfect. Yeah. Yep, that's for fine. I, and how we how we're going to enforce this? So I also was wondering, like at this point, like if this is the first one, then does that mean that we can't make limitations in the future if? Mm that's the case i'm just talking yeah. out loud just a thought i think yeah i think each each license you can restrict how how you feel like you need but I, but i do i just i do want to reach back out to adam and lisa um and brian and just get a little bit better understanding of their their topics i think i understand them but i just want to hear that you know maybe over voice instead of instead of an email and then um and then we would have to take the time to really write any restrictions if we were going to approve it. But um, uh, Casey? So to Carolyn's point, I think this isn't going to happen before the 16th. We're in the middle of prep for town meeting and it's really taken over the world. Yep. All right. So what? So I would suggest yes. doing it for the 30th of All right. June. Okay. So we'll make a motion to continue the hearing till June 30th. In, in which time we'll take take time to um, uh, speak with attorneys and um, and uh, craft any conditions were we to approve it. Yeah, the the, le the legally we can because otherwise I, I don't feel comfortable at all. Yeah. Okay. 
Do you have a second for that, Carolyn? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'll second that. All right. Any further discussion? Yes, I have a hands up. Okay. Steve, Steve Anderson. Um, Hi, Steve. Hi, second. Okay. There you are. We're here. We're both here. Hi, Hi. Eva. Uh, well, one correction. Um, I think you're only allowed to do three cars a year, not four or five unregistered vehicles. We're, you're only supposed to be able to sell three cars a year without getting a license. That's in the state regulations. I've spoken to several dealers already about this. And I, I see it in the, um, first of all, I'm talking. Did I interrupt you? No, you weren't here. All right, David. What, what, go ahead. There's only three cars a year that he can sell, that anyone can sell without a license. So he said four or five. That's not true. All right. Well, we'll get an answer on that. Thank you. Yes. And I'd like you to please investigate his other licenses that in one, the one in Montague and the one in Greenfield and produce, you know, let's, let's see those licenses. This whole thing has to do, because it's internet, as we said last time, and I should tell you that 13 neighbors signed on last time and uh, 15 neighbors have signed a letter this time. So there's 15 people who are objecting to this. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are concerned about it being precedent setting. Yeah, yeah. So am I. And we also share your concern about um, monitoring and enforcement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and as one example, according to the state law, Chapter 140, Section 62, having to do with Class 2 vehicle licenses, a license holder must keep detailed records of each vehicle they acquire, the VIN number, the description of the vehicle, odometer reading, who they got it from and when, who they sold it to and when, and to make those records available during an inspection. And so the question is, will you, the select board, be monitoring the licensee and his records? And if not you, then who and how often? The state police do that. I'd like to hear the answer from the select board. Well, that's a concern, as we as we stated before, that you know we just don't have staff that's um, to spend the time on, on one individual um, situation. So uh, that is a concern. The, the monitoring of the uh, the licenses is well, it's the Massachusetts State Police, but it's through the Division of Registry of Motor Vehicles. Uh, they they're the ones that do actually do all the audits of that. Right. And they're incumbent on that. It's not the it's not the town of Deerfield. Right. Yeah. I've already had to do that. Um. We think that this is a terrible precedence. We have 15 people who believe the same thing. We we um we understand that Bob Walden did not even go down to see the situation. He simply called Mr. Borbo up. And um, we are we are asking for um, a whole start all over again. Go down there and see the situation with that barn, with the cars, with the corner. Um, can it, it's never been plowed to my knowledge. I've been here for many years. I've never seen that little barn ever plowed. There are just so many things. He had two weeks to get a repair letter. That's not a big deal. Still didn't get it. So what we're doing, excuse me, I'm talking. Um, I just want to say that this is all on Mr. Bobo's word, the whole internet thing. There is no way that we could possibly monitor it easily because there are so many cars down there. One more unregistered car, you can barely see it if you know the situation down there. So we're really requesting that the select board not make a precedence of this. This is awful. You can have anyone, anyone in town say they will do this. Is there any more? Anything else? No, thanks. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Steve and, and Ava. Any any other comments? I don't see anybody's hands up. Okay. So we, 
I think we had a motion. Did, did we vote uh, the we continuance? Have not voted yet. Okay. So, so we had a second. On the floor and it has been seconded. All okay. Those in favor. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Sorry, Wolf. Ahead, motion is carried 300. Um, All right. So the hearing is postponed until June 30th. Continued. 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 Yep. Sorry. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll try to sort out what we're going to use for language. If Thank we, you all very much. Thank you for your understanding and patience. Yep. Thank you. We'll be okay. back in touch. See you soon. We'll get back to our agenda. Um, um, Board of Health reports and announcements and reopening plan. Um, I'd just like to say uh, that, you know, the governor has lifted a lot of the restrictions. Um, and if you're vaccinated, um, the, the vaccine is extraordinary. There's no question that you are gonna be pretty much safe. The problem is what we have left um, unvaccinated is our young kids. And, you know, week before last, there was eight cases. Last week was 11. I mean, we are down this week to four, but, you know, we have gone weeks where we had two or three active cases. And so I'm just really concerned that people are not paying attention. We just need to be cautious and, um, and still um, be aware that you know we have vulnerable populations still out there. Instead of being old, the older elders, it's it's now our young kids under 12. So we had a very successful clinic at Frontier, and we're having the second shot um, this next week, and uh, next Friday the 11th. And so it's very very exciting. I'm hoping that we'll be able to run a, you know, with Bay State is with Pfizer that they handle the cold chain management. Um, so I'm hoping we can have a, you know, before school starts, our younger kids done. Um, it will definitely happen before the end of the year, but I'm just, everyone's keeping their fingers crossed that we can try to do it, um, you know, sometime in late August at the latest. So when, when under 12 gets approved, right? Yeah. I mean, yes. yeah, they're, as they're, soon as it's approved, but... As soon as it's approved, we're working with Bay State to set up a clinic for our younger kids. Um, but we're just asking people to please be careful. I, I mean, I'm mm. really, we just need to be aware. That's all. I, I, I would second that. I, I, I'm very concerned about, about the kids. So like, you know, to have 11 cases last week or week before or so, um, it, it's it's heartbreaking to see that, you know, that many, because we, we've gone, a long time without having anything like that and um you know as you can see with summer and everybody's out and everyone kind of feels like it's they're, they're safer um it's still it's affecting our young kids and i think they're a little more resilient but we really don't know because they've been protected by you know all the all the things that we've done at the schools and and um you know, parents have been protected. So I, I'm, I'm still really nervous about that. Um, as you know, I know we only have a couple of weeks left and the kids are out, which would be, which would be good. So there won't be, you know, a ton of congregation of, of kids in the same spot um, and managing that at the schools. But um, I also, uh, on, on, a, on an opposite note, I just, I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish as, as um Yes. as a nation, as a world, as a people to, to be able to get these vaccines and feel very safe. I feel very safe about where I'm at now. It's just nice to know you're vaccinated. I encourage everybody to do that. I'm very proud of the way that the town has handled this um, pandemic. I know it's been extremely inconvenient for many and not being able to meet in person and not being able to come into the town hall and um, I, I know how frustrating that is, but, you know, we were really, we we're focused on public health and, you know, sometimes you're just going to get some knocks for, for making decisions that people aren't happy with. But I do want to also make, you know, be, be proud of where we're at. And I think we're at a position where we can start to move on and open up. Um, you know, I think enough of our vulnerable population, again, other than our children, um, and if people can protect themselves and protect their kids, then I think it's safe to start opening up um you know for for in-person meetings and you know I, I think is it the 15th or so the governor's lifting the emergency order so yeah, he's going to extend he's going to extend some uh some yeah. emergency stuff but yeah. um in general the state of emergency is going to be lifted as right of the 15th. yeah and it will allow you know some hybrid stuff where we can still have a 
we think possibly have a Zoom meeting and and still have people here. So because people, you know, I think more people have been able to participate, you know, remotely and they're comfortable with that now, even though it's hard to get used to. Uh, so and people may not want to drive down here and spend time in a meeting, but may want to participate. And we love that. The more people that can be here, the better. Uh, but I do think it's time to to um, you know, we always said we would follow the science and the science says that enough people are vaccinated that we could begin to open up. Now, not everybody can vaccinate. There may be medical reasons why they couldn't or um, some other reason. But so we still, you know, we still want people to protect themselves. We still ha will have to take some measures until we know we're beyond this or, or anybody who isn't vaccinated really does need to take some protection. But I, I feel like it's safe. You know, if, I know that Casey and um, the staff still need to kind of lay out a few things over the next couple of days, right? Uh, to stickers on the floor and kind of make sure the glass is up and, you know, we have a plan. I mean, I don't know if it makes sense to start on Monday or what, you know, what everybody's thoughts are on that. I, well, Dave, what, what are you thinking? Well, my thoughts are, you know, the sooner we can open up a part of the uh, hall, the better off we are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my thought process is let's get the clerk's office open as soon as possible. Um, and have the other, um, as Mary Cardi called them, our cabinet members, such as Brenda Hill, Barbara, Casey, uh, these people be by appointment only to come into those offices. Mm -hmm. And um, just, you know, you, we have to restrict that. And, you know, in my thought process as well is that, you know, for the foreseeable future until we can get our both all four wheels back on the ground is probably keep part of the town office other than the clerk's office closed on Fridays. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, that'll give people the chance to focus on what they're doing without interruption. Uh, those are my thought processes on that. So um, I know there's already glass on the clerk's office. Yep, we had that put in last year. Uh, yep, so there's a certain amount of barrier there. Um, but let's face it, you know, you go into uh, supermarkets, you know, the, all the arrows are gone off the aisles. Uh, people, you know, 60% of the people aren't wearing masks. Uh, so, you know, it's, um, we as a town government, we've got to start to make sure we're servicing the residents of Deerfield. Of course. Part of that servicing of the residents of Deerfield is giving them access to certain aspects of yep. the town. Yep, I agree it's safe to do so. Casey? Like I said, I, I feel comfortable with that because um, vaccinations really, I mean, are extraordinary, seriously. Yeah, I think, yeah the rates. You know, and our rate is very high. I know the state, the state has us at 95% of our eligible no. population, but I think that has to do with the fact that they've jumbled in Waitley's zip code, our 01373 zip code with Waitley residents, but yeah. uh, we still. still have a high percentage. And yeah, so do. I do think it is safe. Yep. Okay. So yeah. my only concerns are basically the transition in one day is kind of difficult for us to do. We still do have to make sure that we provide some social distancing parameters for everyone and help the clerk's office be up and running so that you know day the day they at nine o'clock on the morning that we open the computers are ready to go because again we haven't been open for almost a year and a half mm -hmm. um but it's also something of a scramble for us if we have to go out and do a couple of things i mean there may be some things that we need to work through as we experience a reopening and there's also a comfort level for everyone, people coming into the town hall, people working in the town hall. So I had, I would ask if we could wait until Monday, but I'm hearing that two members of the board don't want to do that. So that's my comment. I'm, I'm okay with Monday. Uh, Jennifer, you had a comment Jen. too? Is your <clears throat> we're in the experience yeah. let us tell you <laughs> yeah, exactly. hey. um i just wanted to let you know casey because i'm not sure you knew because you were in a meeting when i left but um the computer was 
updated and Perfect. fixed at the yeah. uh, at the clerk's in the, office. In the at clerk's the office, office. Good. yeah. Good. So Good. just just so you have that piece of information. That's and, helpful. You know. That's helpful. Yeah. Okay. But I agree. Give us a chance Monday. Yeah, I mean, I think. Um, and then I mean, we've been closed a year and a half. I think two days is not a huge ask just to get back on board. Um, you know, make sure that all the staff are aware what they can do, what they need to do. If we need to put arrows on the floor, yeah. uh, it just um, it just seems like it's time to open and, and be joyous of that. Yeah, we can open up the doors on the end of the hallways. We get the air circulation. Right. Um, it's uh, there's a number of things that we can do. Um, the most important thing to remember is is aerosol concentration. Mm -hmm. So if we have the doors open um, and we have you know, so some social distancing, I, I think it will be safe. Yeah. Do um, we also have for each of the each of the offices has the air purifiers. We have right. one very large one for the main meeting area, uh, sanitizing locations, gloves, masks if people feel more yeah. comfortable with them. Um, yeah, and, and obviously we would work with our cleaning staff to make sure that everything is getting um, wiped also down. Have have the ropes on the doors that we can put across the entrance so if there's people in that office yeah the rope is up they know that they can't come in if the rope is down yeah you've got you've got a customer in already yeah yeah uh, exactly and so one thing that i would ask so there's also a question about in-person meetings mm -hmm. at this point the governor has not fully and i think if you look in your mail i gave this to you is some recommendations from council about the ramifications of the rescinding of the governor's order. There are some things that are not in place right now. And that as of June 15th, without some modification, it could be difficult for us to hold in-person meetings. So if we're, revisit if we're visiting on the reopening and I'm taking notes, I've got, Jennifer did most of this already because we had had some conversations, the two of us, and so what we have is Monday through Thursday, 9 to 4 p.m., we would be open. We would be closed on Friday to the public, but we would be working because we found that it's, it's, we're still working, but there's a lot of things that we can get done and, and do that on Fridays. The town clerk's window would be open, but all other offices are open by appointment only and so this is the piece there was a nuance David that you had that I want to clarify as part of the plan how do you want that to read as the board of health member so other offices are open by appointment is that what you want it to read well, or do you want it to say something different you mentioned it you framed well, it differently a few minutes ago I'm looking at what they uh, Mary uh, called our cabinet members mm. And so that we make sure that those people, you know, and I'm a, a firm believer that this should have been going on all the time anyways, that, you know, these cabinet members such as, uh, you know, Barbara, Brenda, yourself, should only be seen by appointment because we can't just constantly have people walking in to see That's you. What you, do. you know, we have, they can come in and they can talk to Pat. Uh, you can designate talking to Jennifer, but as the cabinet member, you know, it should be by appointment because let's face it, how many times during the day does your chain of thought get changed? <laughs> oh, I, the number doesn't work. You want work. an answer or no? <laughs> you know, uh, I can't use the words that, that are coming to my mind, but uh, it's uh it's, you know, it's hard to get a job done when you can't focus on the job. Uh, so I want to circle back to, to in-person meetings. I, I really want to see that start. Um, and I'm not sure what the holdup is. The holdup is we still have to, re we are still required to provide remote participation. Correct. So and regardless if we hold one remotely or not, people can still be in the building. They can be in the building, but if you've got remote participation, those people that are zooming in may not be able to hear and see what you're doing. 
Right. And I know that we're working on a meeting to make sure that FCAT has got their stuff squared, but people couldn't see before either. Uh, but I mean, well, what I'm saying is I think that we were always, uh, my intention is to have this laptop open at every meeting and be streaming it like I normally would. Um, and we do have all the, you know, I would put mute on that. We would have the dial in number that we had at the beginning of the system, you know, when, when this started so that people can hear. Um, and if they want to zoom into the meeting, they can zoom into the meeting. I'm not sure what what else we need to do. The other, but the other thing I do want to say is that how taxing this remote That's meeting the problem. has been on Jennifer and Casey and Alex and Jennifer and Jennifer and Casey and Jennifer and, Alex and Jennifer and <laughs> Casey and Alex. So I, I, I mean, really mainly Jennifer. Yeah, mainly Jennifer. mostly Jennifer. <laughs> did did we say Jennifer? Yeah. Um, Can we yeah. repeat that? No, no, but the, the thing that it's gonna that Casey and I were speaking about today is the fact that it still has to happen. So whether like somebody still has to start the meeting, somebody still mm -hmm. has to monitor the meeting. Does does Jennifer have to stay at town hall from four o'clock until six o'clock? No. Or do I, you know, no, 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 but I'm saying somebody's gotta for all of the meetings put on the television and and that's what we're going to have to work through with chris and mm -hmm. with fcat and 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 other Those responsibilities staff. right yeah. and and sort of pivot but it's it's going to take a, a little bit of finesse for us to be and, able to pivot mm -hmm. right right and and, to and make so sure that's that why we're, we're asking give us until the 15th to work that out because okay. i did talk to council today as you know the governor has filed a bill to transition a legislative action that would allow us to recognize that remote participation has increased participation in town business across the board. That's a big yeah. comment that came out of some of the studies about COVID and mm -hmm. its impacts. And so there's right now the open meeting law, if it stops June 15th at 12 a.m., we can't offer that anymore. You all have to be in the same room. Perform. If you have for quorum mm -hmm. um there's a lot of things that we've been able to do that we wouldn't be able to do if that happens so if right. the governor's legislation passes and it could pass at midnight on the 14th right um that's kind of what everybody's expecting i understand now what you're saying okay so, so there's we'll there's a time. transition process for meetings that's really critical for us because if we have to pivot to go back to completely in-person meeting Mm -hmm. then we switch to in-person meetings, but we lose some of the latitude and some of the connectivity that we might've had before. On the other hand, functionally, how do we deal with the fact that we need to assign these tasks to people? Because we've been doing so much of it in right. small little co a small little cadre of people. Also, um, case, so I started... March 23rd, we closed March 26th. So I have never seen town hall open in my <laughs> tenure here. Um, but my, my point when I was talking to Casey about it today is we have like, let's just say last night, there was four meetings, two Zoom accounts. You know, I got the minutes within 24 hours from two of the boards and posted those on the website. But if we have three rooms that are happening that are in person, do we get more Zoom accounts? Are they like, right, right. <laughs> is it, do you, do you know what I mean? It's like, I we do. have to come up with some sort of like, how is that, how are we gonna manage that? Because we've done quite a few, you know, extra meetings that we've been monitoring and putting up that weren't put on FCAT before, like that, right. we, that I just posted exactly. to YouTube. So, you know, just making sure that everybody has equal opportunity and we're following the govern governor's standards and, mm -hmm. and guidance, but I, I guess it. it's a little more complicated. Yeah. The opening is the easy part. It's managing the online is the hard part. The background. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I'm a firm believer that from now on, we're always going to have hybrid. In my I opinion. do think that's going to be the case because but people are too like much right now, to you know, we had 12, 12 people on this call and, you know, Trevor and Carolyn, you can back me up on this. How many times have we had seven people sitting in the audience when we had a select board meeting? 
pretty rare. Pretty, pretty rare, rare is right. Yeah. And there's been a lot of meetings we've had where 30 or 40 people have showed up. Well, I'd have to say that Jeff Upton and Chris Harris are always there. <laughs> they're, they're, they're definitely, uh, they support uh, coming yeah. to town meeting and yeah. being involved. And I appreciate that very much. Yeah, but we don't really have more than that. So I, I, I do feel, I agree with you, Dave. I think it, it is better for participation. But that may so that's why we need to be able to pivot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, so we'll give you the time to do that for sure. Also, like Casey was just talking about, or Jen was just talking about scheduling, um, having the amount of meetings in 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 the building at once is also concerning, especially if you know in the smaller rooms and stuff. Um, and so this is why we really need to, and it's not that we haven't been thinking about this. It's just the mechanics of a plan. We actually haven't been able to sit down with the people that are, that are key players in this mm -hmm. at FCAT to really determine what a pathway can be because up until probably two weeks ago, we didn't have an indication of when we were going to come out. Mm -hmm. And then we run into the question of how are we going to manage the activity that actually was created through COVID. Yeah. So it's for us, and we're also right up against town meeting. So that makes it a little bit, so you um, know, challenging. But she's got a meeting scheduled. I give her lots of credit. So uh, do we need a formal vote to open for Monday? Um, do you want us to do a formal vote? So what I would say is, let me just reiterate what we have in here. So we would reopen beginning... Monday the 7th, hours of operation would be Monday to Thursday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Friday would be closed to the public. Staff will be working other normal than, hours. Other than the Town clerk's time. window will be open Monday through Thursday, but appointments should be made for cabinet level, level staff. I think you and better- And that would be to- I think you need to define that because, you know, okay. I, I know we were talking, we talked about it um, based on the class but nobody else really knows. But, but nobody else is really following that so you know just list the other offices and say you know that they're going to be um open by appointment so you want other offices will be open by appointment i i think so um right because i think that if you are going to separate casey and i if that's not going to work for her because of our situation people are going to come in and no matter what, Casey's not going to be able to not engage when there's people talking to me and come, you know, even by appointment. So um, I think, don't you think that Casey? I just, I do. I think what we, I think we should be, I think we should start to, to pull this together through appointments and giving us a chance to transition back into being fully reopened. I think the private sector, I, it, I think it was, and I could be wrong, but the private sector, they've, I know my husband did this with his store. The day they were open is the day they were open. And, you know, he, the mask thing, they had, he had things in play. Not to say we don't, it's just our, the complicated level of service that we provide and have been through all these hybrid meetings and, and figuring all of this out by ourselves makes it, makes it a little challenging. So we wanna do this the right way. I definitely can meet with people out in the main meeting area as well. So And that's what like I would I wanna do too. You know, not that, that I could just go out into the main area and we, we, we've talked about this before having designated tables for designated departments that we can meet out there for appointments instead of in our regular office spaces. And we had thought about that earlier on mm. because mm -hmm. of the, the need to be, have people feel comfortable that want to meet with us. So their comfort level is just as important as how we provide service to residents and visitors. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're clear on that. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm going to add that as an additional item. Whenever possible, appointment meetings should be held in the main meeting room or in larger spaces. Yes, I agree. We should be conscious of that, and um, you know, just to make it safe, safer. 
um, and be more, you know, again, until we get the younger kids, uh, you know, vaccinated, just, you know, Dave has grandchildren, I have grandchildren. We, you know, we don't wanna, there are breakthrough infections. So we don't wanna, um, I mean, our vaccine will protect us from, you know, becoming very sick or even having symptoms, but we don't wanna pass it on, so. Um, right. And so we need to mention that all our safety protocols will remain in effect. And here's a good question. Should bathrooms be public or not public? Because we're, there's a level of safety and comfort there. I actually think, Casey, this would be a question for Bob that we, act, we have to have bathroom access right. and whether yeah. or not we designate one for staff um, right. And the other one, I, we, I would just double use. check for with um, Bob with occupancy numbers and such. So, uh, so I think one thing, Dick and Bob will have to, because Dick, I think is going to have something to say about that too. So with those discussion items in place, is the board comfortable voting to open town hall? We would have to get that clarification and you would have to allow us to just write that in. Yep. But is the board comfortable opening town hall as of June 7th? Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. Do you, uh, so I think we should take a formal vote. Okay. Hi, motion. Carolyn. Well, I'll make that motion. It's, it's, I was going to say. <laughs> I already, I already made the motion. Oh, you made the motion. Then I'll second the motion, as noted. <coughs> okay. Hi, Carol. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Motion okay. carried. Three zero zero. All right. Um, I think we should. I think we should vote um, the library um, uh, opening plan because we had voted to, um, you know, align ourselves with the state and the library would like to require mass uh, mm -hmm. in their building for both vaccinated and unvaccinated because they have no way to really show who is vaccinated and who's not and they have a lot of children there and they also have um i get i guess a lot of immune compromised people that have um which we know the vaccine um is less effective so yep. um, even if you are vaccinated so um i would like us to support the library's um more restrictive um uh, opening plan of of requiring masks and um social distancing i'll second that any further discussion? Not hearing any. Uh, all those in favor? Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried 300. Casey, can you let Candace know that we voted in favor of that? Yes, I can. Thank you. Anything else on the Board of Health? No, I, I just, uh, as far as we know, uh, I know we talked about running clinics for the um, flu in the fall as early as possible, maybe er early as September. Um, but the boosters, um, right now, antibody levels for people are, the majority of people are very, very high. And so we're not really sure when the, the need for boosters are gonna occur. So we'll keep on top of this. And as soon as as soon as we know more information, we'll um, certainly let everyone know that we're going to be running clinics for boosters at some point. Okay. So here I am going to open up the Pandora's box. We've had a lot of rain lately, so we have a lot of puddles. So we're going to have a lot of what, Carolyn? <laughs> Yes, please patrol your yards for standing it feels, water. <laughs> feels normal again. I know this is a normal um, subject. Our 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 testing, uh, I mean, our trapping and testing is starting to occur, and um, hopefully, uh, the lava siding, uh, the highway department will be doing lava siding pretty soon. Um, although it's been extremely dry. Mm -hmm. um, but they will lava side the um, catch basins and a couple hot spots that we have in town. And um, hopefully we'll make it through um, 4th of July weekend without any West Nile disease. Last year, 
was the first time in 11 years of surveillance that we had no West Nile. And I have to say, I, I attribute it to the efforts of the highway department um, and to, you know, lava siding are, are really a couple of hot spots in Old Deerfield and, and in South Deerfield. So um, we will be out trapping. If you see the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District truck setting traps, um, it's, you know, they're working for us. And we'll start the testing pool um, next week. You know, they'll be trapped this week and we'll start getting regular reports by next week. Okay, very good. Thank you. David, uh, this, yeah. there was a comment that came through about the class two license well after you started the reopening yeah. plan. So I don't know if people took a look at that or- I saw. I, okay, I just wanted to yeah. point that out. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I finally figured out what that chat button meant. Yeah, <laughs> people are going to make a comment without having to make yeah. a public comment. So, yeah, my age, sometimes you're a little slower than you should be. <laughs> uh, okay, the next thing is consent, consent agenda. Anything for us? Normally that would be minutes. Okay. But I didn't catch that. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. I caught it for the next one, though. Okay. So the next thing we have is the environmental assessment is a senior center. So Carolyn, did you want to talk to that? Um, I just want to say that we had some person uh, come through um, that was recommended to us to um, give us a, an estimate of what it would cost to do an environmental assessment. The building has been closed up, you know, um, for more than a year. So we're concerned about mold. Um, we're concerned about um, asbestos and, um, you, know, you know, just in general, the air quality. So um, we're hoping that um, he will be able to do the assessment. Um, uh, we'll get the quote and we'll be able to do it in the next two or three weeks so that um, we'll, be on, we'll be able to know whether we can open the senior center or not safely for people. Okay. I have a hands up. David, Christina's hand is up. Yeah, Christina, go ahead. So um, I'm concerned about this environmental assessment. First of all, I'm confused why it's being done now and not say five years ago or three years ago or even at the beginning of our shutdown, because the building hasn't been shut down. We've been at work every day. So it's not like it's been closed up. Um, and it just seems uh, very odd to me that you would start this process a month before I had made the reopen, you know, proposed a reopening date that the other two towns um, immediately okayed. Um, and I'm glad to hear that you only think it will take a couple of weeks because I, I would still like to meet that opening date. Um, but, I, but my other big concern is Dick said it was possible that it would fail, obviously, which I'm sure is possible. Um, what, what do we do for this? I mean, where do we have a senior? Is there a plan about what happens then? Um, there just won't be a senior center. Well, I, I had suggested to Casey that um, if in fact there is a, a problem with the building qual air quality, um, you know, maybe she could reach out to Waitley to see if we had a temporary spot at the Waitley Town Hall or, you know, because they have a pretty large building down there. Um, Christina will have to come up with some alternative. Um, we are just concerned that, um, you know, with the air conditioning, you turn on, you're going to be it's, it's gonna be hot again pretty soon um, and we'll be using air conditioning. So you're gonna be pulling in um, air, right. air that is we're really concerned about or circulating well, air that we're really concerned about. I get that in general. I guess my question is just why, why the priority all of a sudden now a month before reopening and not say a year ago or and Sue's been working in that building for 10 years. You know, she's like, well, why didn't they care 10 years ago? So um, I'm just trying to understand why it's an issue now when it hasn't been. 
It has always been a concern, Christina. And the reason why um, we didn't do it earlier is because it's been unbudgeted. It still is an unbudgeted item, but we're gonna ask for a reserve transfer from the finance committee to handle it. Okay, well, I guess all I can do is hope that it gets done quickly and that it's something, if there is a problem, it's easy enough to fix. Because as you can imagine, it wouldn't be easy to just move buildings i mean there'd be a there, you know my whole off i just even think of just my office so um but i understand but we should we need to make sure it's safe i mean that safety is a priority and you certainly don't want to put people in there when the air is is questionable right i i just it was just odd to me because the other two towns jumped on accepting it the same day i submitted it and then I didn't hear from Deerfield and then it was this. So I'm just trying, I'm simply trying to understand. Um, I'm not trying to be argumentative. I'm simply trying to understand that. Well, it's, it's Christina, it's our building and it's our responsibility. And um, you know, uh, Sunderland and Whaley are assuming that we are providing a safe building. And that's all we're doing is just verifying that it is safe. Okay, and there is a plan in place if it fails. We uh, would need to develop that, Christina. Yes. So we need, right now, we need a quote to do the assessment so we understand what the costs of just doing the assessment are. So we need to do this one step at a time. Okay, well, well, as you know, we can't meet outside right now either. So it's just, it's just frustrating because I'm trying to hold programming, so. Okay, thank you. Hey, uh just because of uh, failures in the past doesn't mean that we continue to make these failures in the future. Well, that's encouraging, yes. <laughs> Thank you, David. Okay, uh, next thing on the agenda is the uh, revote of the CPA article. Um, Thursday afternoon, uh, I received a phone call from uh, the Department of Agriculture um, uh, Agricultural Preservation Restriction Program Manager. And um, Michelle had asked me that, you know, uh, was it too late for the town to appropriate $13,000, which is 10% of um, a project the, um, um, on South Mill River Road? And I was like, well, our town meeting hasn't occurred yet, but our warrant is closed. And you know, the Warren articles are pretty much, you know, they're in draft form, but we can maybe get committees together. So um, I called because of the holiday, we, you know, Monday didn't count. So um, the CPA committee um, was willing to meet and they met earlier this evening and they did approve um, the Fisk um, property for um, agricultural preservation match. And, um, we, so we as a select board are being asked to um, approve it as well. And then the finance committee, I'm, I'm assuming will approve it at, um, you know, or before town meeting, if they um, have a, can post before town meeting. Yes, Casey. They actually approved it last night in anticipation. So what we need the board to do is confirm oh, okay. that they, uh, that they support a request from FY 2022 anticipated revenues of CPA funds to, but for $13,000 towards an APR land sale as the match for the APR programs offer of $117,000 for that piece of land. So the total of that is $130,000, which is the appraised value of the land. The, this is the, this is fairly common. We've done it in the past, right? Conservation restriction, uh, or you know, is what the one hundred thirty thousand represents. Um, so, this is fourth generation. Um, it's a farming family, and it's to keep it in agriculture. And the Department of Ag told me that they intend to close on it in a relatively speedy manner, in a matter of you know three or four weeks. Uh, it's already been surveyed. 
the intention of Pam Fisk is to buy out her siblings so it can remain in agriculture. So uh, it's it seems like a very um, legitimate, it's prime soils. Um, so uh, it seems like a legitimate um, request. It, I would just state this is one of the most beautiful sections of farmland in, in town. I mean, th there's a lot we have in town that are beautiful, but if you're heading up 116 towards Conway, it's it's the big field on the left. I know there's a portion kind of notched out, but what I can see of the aerial map, um, you know, it's just just before you get to that farm on the corner. There you go. There's the farm on the, on the corner. And um, there's a, a, a big open section of field that is always planted with corn or, or some sort of um, agricultural product. It's just a beautiful place. You know, the sunset comes over there and it, it'd be great to leave it, you know, without a bunch of homes in there. <clears throat> so I think leaving it open for farmland is, is exactly what should be done there. Yeah. So I certainly support it. Okay. I, I support it. And, you know, it's been, as my discussion with Casey has been, it's been quite a few years since we put something in APR. It has. I, it has, it been. has been. Yeah. I, think I went back 10 out. years and couldn't find one. I know. I think it's been quite a while. So yeah. um, we've taken out a couple things, so it's nice to see, you know, something going back in. Right. So. So we adjusted the warrant to reflect that inclusion. And this this was processed mm -hmm. over a, a, a very short period of time. And we explained oh. it to finance committee. They were supportive of that and made their recommendation last night. So what you see in the warrant, which is in your packet, it reflects that change. And the adjustments, Brenda made the adjustments with Jennifer to the article to reflect the changes. So we would put $13,000 of anticipated revenue for FY22 towards this project and 25,000 would be put toward the reserve, would be a transfer to the open space reserve. Do you need a vote for, for that from us? Um, if you would like to vote, that yeah. would be helpful. I think it would be helpful for both the application and for the article. So I would yep. vote to support the APR sub application submission. So moved. I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried three zero zero. Thank you. At your APR, hopefully. Thank you. This was this truly was last minute, um, so I appreciate everybody being so cooperative. May I? I Je question? Jeff Upton wants to say something. Oh sure. Yeah, yeah just very quickly, and I'm, and I'm not trying to throw, throw a curveball in this because uh, I was on the uh, finance committee last night, and uh, think this is a good idea. But uh, because it being the 13,000, I believe it has to go through CIPC also, the Capital Improvement Committee meeting. And we do have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow night. It is not on the agenda, but I don't know if because of the last minute, it could be considered uh, as far as other business. And yeah, I uh, was going to bring it up. Um... Unanticipated. Item unanticipated. Yeah. Already, right. Yes. The meeting was already posted before um, I got this yes. phone call. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I just just wanted to mention that. And and uh, I would I did leave a voicemail early this morning uh, for Casey. Could we just double check the bylaw language as far as us being able to entertain that for tomorrow night? And I, I just want to make sure that we're uh, going through the process correctly so that doesn't get challenged. Uh, that's just which process? CIPC? Well, if, if you read, if you read the, uh, the last two paragraphs. So I've been looking at that all day, Jeff, and I, and for another reason. So you're talking about the 2018 change to the bylaws, correct? Yeah, the new right, and it's under it's under section 1017, and it's the last two paragraphs under 1017. Right, and there's a little, right. little question. So there is there. an allowance want... to do this. 
Right. I just want to make sure it's a, that it's allowed. And if, if council feels comfortable with that, I read it a little differently. I know what the intent was, but I read it a little differently. That's all. So what are you challenging? Because it says I, I, if I, I, I'm not the committee may amend or add. I'm just, I'm just asking. And that is, is when it says fiscal year, if you look at that, it, we're, we're talking about approving something that is going to be coming up in FY22, correct? As far as this being proposed correct. for the CPA for FY22. Yeah. And your amendment is saying fiscal year. We're still in fiscal year 21. And I'm uh, all I'm asking is I want to make sure this wording allows us to vote for FY22, even though it refers to the fiscal year of, of you know, the fiscal year, whatever year that may be. We mm -hmm. happen to be in fiscal year 21, and this is not this is not referring to. 21 this is referring to fy 22 i believe and so right. i just want to make sure i just want to make sure that legally uh we're we're able to do this and because like i say i'm not opposed to this i just want to make sure that we're we're uh we're doing this correctly i guess yeah i i would hate to get to annual town meeting and have somebody call us on this if 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 we're not following proper procedure that's all and i don't know why i say the interpretation i guess because it says in the second paragraph it says during the fiscal year right the you may amend or add an item to the adopted capital improvement plan if it funds if it finds reasonable cause all right so that's during the fiscal year does that mean that that item has to be during 21 as far it as it doesn't say being, oh, it doesn't well, say fine. and so keep reading because what it says is and must be acted upon before the next annual town meeting and it also says that any change has to be adopted by the select board and also has to go to CIPC for consideration. Right, but that's what I'm saying. But it says during the fiscal year. And as I said, this, this we're, we're in fiscal 21. The, the uh, request is for FY22. Now, if this, yes. came up, if this came up after June 30, if this came up in July, then, then the request would fall into the fiscal year. I don't know if this request, because it's FY22, falls in the fiscal year of FY21. And all I'm saying is I'm not trying to make an issue of it. I just want to make sure that we're doing it correctly so we don't get called on it. Yeah, I've already, I've already voted last night through Finance Committee and I already mentioned that this is a great program I think it makes sense, and uh, and I support it. But I just want to make sure that with with our capital improvement committee tomorrow night that that we're we're following the bylaw. That's all, and that's why I asked if if maybe council could take a look at that because we're in fiscal twenty one. The request is for fiscal twenty two. And um, as I, I'm not I, to... I will ask council, Jeff, but I cannot guarantee I will have an answer can because I... council is doing five town meetings right now. Can I ask yeah. a question? I'm lucky I get five minutes, so I will ask her, but yeah, I don't okay. read it that way. I don't read it that way. So, okay. my... And I read oh. it five times today myself. Jeff, yeah. how is, can I just ask how this would be different than any other request for fiscal 22? We would we would, uh, because of the December 1st deadline. So, and, and because of the way it's worded, Carolyn, we haven't run into this uh, recently. So, and, and I'm, not so, to, 
I'm not trying to question this. I'm just trying to get clarification. Yeah, but I thought we, I thought we had uh, made sure that we had flexibility. Um, that's that's what we tried to do. But with the fiscal, with the, with the wording, I just want to make sure that we're correct with the okay. wording. That's all. All right. And like I say, I. And so I don't read it that way, Jeff. I read it as there is the ability to have some flexibility and make an amendment or an addition as long as you follow it being submitted to the select board and it being reported to the next meeting. Because we actually have a uh, chance to get this on I, the I, annual. I understand that. So that's how uh, I read it. I understand that. And, and on most of that, I agree 100%. The problem is, it says the fiscal year. The fiscal year we're in is in 21 right now. Uh, and the the request is for 22. So the request is not in the fiscal year of 21, which is is what the wording states in the bylaw in the fiscal year. So and all, all I'm saying is just for clarification. And I'm 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 fine with it. You know, if if it's still a question, I'll just abstain from vote from the vote. That's not not a problem, uh, because like I say, I support it uh, on the finance committee last night. Being a finance member and looking at it, I support it and I voted for it uh, as far as a CIPC member looking at the language. All I'm saying is. I have a question on the language that I'd like clarification about just to make sure that uh, this doesn't get challenged on the town meeting at the annual town meeting to make sure that we're following the proper procedure. That's all. And Thank if you, we Jeff. Trevor? Yeah. Sure. Trevor has something to say. I just Trevor. wanted to, um, I was just curious, like, it just so this the, the capital improvement planning committee bylaws it's, are seem to be really difficult to to do town business with um because things change immensely fast and and so i just not really sure like if this came up any other time uh how do we make a decision on um supporting an apr thing if people need to purchase land fairly soon right when they do a project would we wait for every annual town meeting or do you just report that you've done it later on and and not really no. worry about depending on how you fund it you have to go to town meeting we happen to have the opportunity to be able to address it at right. annual town meeting right. otherwise so, we would have to call or, special or and or special town meeting it doesn't yeah. have to be well, the annual town so, meeting but the cost, right right meeting but the also. cost to um you know, people make real estate business decisions. Um, I agree with you, Trevor. Quicker than, you know, and, and we would never have the cost of a special town meeting just to do an APR, you know. So I wonder, does does APR uh, projects, should they be, um, you know, should they be a part of the CIPC review or not? I, I don't know. It just seems... Um, you know, certain projects just seem to be we're, we're always getting hung up on on a recommendation or a review. And um, so I don't know. So here's the question. Mm -hmm. It says acquisition of land for a public person purchase. This is right. not an acquisition. Correct. This is support of APR. Right. Development right land sale. That's that right. is not an acquisition. The town is not acquiring the land. Although, although a conservation restriction, we are a stakeholder in the conservation restriction. Uh, so I look at it as- But a, it's a preservation. It's not a conservation restriction. A conservation restriction is completely different. This is, a, this is agricultural preservation restriction. It's still a conservation restriction. And it is monitored yearly and it has certain requirements. So it's a little bit stricter but it's still a conservation restriction that would be on the deed. But is it a purchase of the town prop? Like it's not a but purchase But we're not of purchasing the, the land. I mean, I just Even if we're like the that. monitoring entity for the conservation restriction, which I we know. may not be. No, we're not. It's not a we're true not. acquisition of land. No, 
Oh, we are not the monitoring. I just want to state we're not the monitoring. Yeah. The, the, the state right. does the monitoring to this. This is going through the state mm -hmm. APR program. So the state right. comes out and verifies every year that it is in agricultural. Yes, and um, I just wanted to say that part of the application um, when talking to uh, Michelle at APR, she said that why they wanted it right now was to match the state's timeline to close quickly and yeah. not to have to postpone and wait for another cycle within the state. Right. So it's it's part of their process that's already, you know. This is up to the top. Um, I, my of, only question was, is it a review of the CIPC? I mean, it just seems like it's not really in that well, realm. That's my concern. I don't even know if it is because I we're not technically acquiring land. Right. So that I just feel like everything seems to need to be a review of the CIPC. And it, I, I mean, I think we should really think about what really needs to be and what doesn't need to be. We, we, have, we have tried to make the bylaw more flexible. Yeah. And, yes, and, we have. And, we, and I, I agree, it's worth having oversight. You know, and, for sure. and, and for the transparency, for the transparency, I feel like it should still go through the committee. Um, whether you agree or not agree that the conservation restriction is a, you know, purchase or not, but we are participating in that conservation restriction. So mm -hmm. a, oh. I feel like it is a CIPC, you know, it's just a recommendation. Mm -hmm. It's just a recommendation. Yep. Tom Meeting is going to vote this one way or right. the other. Yep. And I think anybody that drives up on 116 is going to be supportive of this. Yeah. Because it is, it is like you said, the sunsets in that area are just mm -hmm. magnificent. Um, you know, people enjoy seeing the agriculture there. And, and, and the, this person is using the money to buy out their siblings. And that's why this is bumped to the top of the APR um, you know, line, yeah. you know, the state is making every effort to make sure that this goes through. So, okay. I, I, I think I, we're on safe ground with this. I do too. From everything I do. I've seen, uh, you know, if there is a question on this that could come up at the, um, at the town meeting, I think we got a very defendable position and that uh, Lisa can address it uh, uh, at that time. Yeah, I do, I do okay. too. Right. I, thank you. I just, I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure that I'm not misunderstood, because yep. as I said, I, su I support you know. this. I think it's a great idea. I we just want to make sure that we're we're doing this properly, so we we don't get ourselves into a bind if it gets challenged uh, at the annual town meeting. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I, I, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, yep. Jeff. Okay, uh, next thing on our agenda is mail. Um, we had a couple pieces of mail that we need to, I just want you to see. So, Mead Tellerman and Costa sent us the advisory about the, about the ABCC lifting the rules for operations with COVID restrictions being rescinded. So that's the first one. We did get a Department of Veteran Services letter. And then we also have an advisory that came in about the municipal implications of lift, ending the state of emergency. So again, this, this harkens back to some of the processes that we've had to pivot and deal with, figure out ways to address. And some of it we've done, but some things are gonna come up as, as as the conditions change. And so the ABCC rules are fairly, I would say are, are fairly straightforward. ABCC tends to be fairly strict. Um, but the, the reason I wanted you to look at both of them is because it could have an effect on businesses and in, in town and such. So I, would, I just want you to see this. I had forwarded it out earlier, but I try to draw people's attention to some of these things. They, that August 15th date will be extended, I'm pretty sure. So I just, you know, just to let Trevor and Dave know from my, my um, uh, DPH webinar on Tuesday, they felt pretty comfortable that that was June. In fact, 
fat going to be June extended? 15? No, it's, June it's oh. no, the the ABCC thing was. Oh, you know, okay, August. sorry. It's That's extended till dining. August August fifteenth, but we, um, DPH feels like um, the governor is going to extend that uh, until you know cold weather, some kind of cold weather date. So we still don't have to worry about it. I mean, this 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 pertains to like Berkshire yeah. Grove, um, or anybody that has out, outdoor dining. Actually, Berkshire so yeah, Grove. that's the sixty days after the the end of the state of emergency. Correct, Carolyn? Yes, but, but this, okay. this does not affect Berkshire Brew because they have actually applied for uh, a license for outside. Right, they've this applied. They have not received. Yeah, approval. but they haven't, they haven't received yeah. it yet. But right. Just, the one that it would affect is something like Wolfie's with the outside dining that they had. Right. Um, but, if they, but they can continue they, that. They can continue that until August 15th for sure. But my understanding is from DPH is that everybody's going to be extended no. to some cold weather date. It well, just hasn't chance, been. There's a chance he's not even going to do it because they can't find employees. Oh, geez. Oh, okay. I just, I just wanted you both to know that yep. on the call on Tuesday, uh, the webinar they they there was a real discussion that was going to be some cold weather date yeah. it just didn't come out yet so not to worry about it yeah okay uh, the next mail was the uh upper pioneer valley veterans services district Mm -hmm. Yes. Looks like they have a new te telehealth access uh, location at, at their uh, right. at the Greenfield offices and they're having an open house on the 21st from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. So take a look at the that'll give more services to veterans, um, which is great. Certainly good access. Yep. Can can we just put that banner on the um, our web page, you know, that beginning June twenty first, veterans can schedule a telehealth appointment. Um, that can we do that? Sure. Yes. Our, it's some link or something on the web page. Thank sure. you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, maybe maybe we. Should, Oh, oh, just, I see Christina's still on. Can, can someone send that over to Christina to make sure she has that for um, the senior center? Mm -hmm. Sure, Thanks. it's also, uh, Christina, it's also on our on website our in, in our packet, okay. so you can just grab yep. it from there too. All right, I will share it. Thank you. Okay, town, the next thing, town administrator. Okay. I wanted to bring you up to date. I put something in your packet about this. I wanted to get you bring you up to date on the street light inventory and moving forward with the replacements for what are they called? Now I lost it. I'm in the middle of saying something and I completely lost it. So street the lights. street yeah. lights. Yeah. They, so was... the energy resources committee worked with Alyssa LaRose up at the COG and me and with the procurement officer, Andrea Woods, and did a procurement for a vendor to audit the street lights, create an inventory review product op options for replacement of those street lights and develop a final design of those street lights. And we got three submissions and they came in at different tiers. And I'm letting you know, because I want you to have an update on the green communities, but also we are in a different timeline than we were, than we started out with because things changed on our for us and going through the review process once we received the responses to the request for um, proposal. So we had three responses. LightSmart Energy Consulting 
was the recommendation by the Energy Resources Committee. And part of that recommendation is a more comprehensive response that, like I said, includes the audit, the inventory, a review of product options that we can use and a design of that system transition. They also would work on the applications for with the utilities to, to facilitate that. So it came back, it, it's a, that's the price. That's actually the full budgeted amount we had in there. And I had a call from them. They may be able to be flexible with us. So the reason I'm, I'm mentioning it is because I'm going to send them with energy resources recommendation. I'm going to send lights or light smart uh, an email and just request that we make some adjustments to that timeline and then get that contract started so they can get started so we can not lose too much too much time on this one because we have to finish all of the green communities work by next june and this is just one piece of it this is rather this is a smaller piece of the larger project to replace the street lights okay uh are do you feel like the energy committee can handle this, Casey? I think there's got to be some intersect, Carolyn, and that's part of the problem. They, okay. one of the issues is timing. Um, well, no, I'm, I, and, I'm just concerned about that deadline. We have to, you know, I want to make sure that we meet that deadline. That's the only thing. So the other piece to this, you'll actually see it at the next select board meeting we need to sign an MOU with the COG to continue to get this type of technical assistance through Alyssa and Allison so that we can continue with this. One of the things that's been really helpful is having that kind of technical assistance from that office up at the COG because they're really familiar with how these things work. Writing, helping us write the applications, doing the reporting for the applications and that sort of thing. So I think if we can keep that technical assistance in place, we can move forward in a reasonable manner. Okay. Okay. And some of the other stuff that we had talked about is really just going, most of, that was really my report right now. I've had some conversations with everybody, but our main focus has been the warrant. And yep. so we added a couple of things that were unanticipated and Unless you have any questions, I'd like to move on to that so we can address. There's a vote we need to take and we need to go through some of the changes to the warrant. Okay. So we received, I received a transfer between appropriations for snow and ice from Brenda yesterday. And it needs to be approved by the select board and then we can forward it to the finance committee. And that transfer is 30, hold on. 30,109.83. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And it'd be coming out of the uh, general highway payroll, which there's enough yes. in that account to cover that. Yep. Thank you, Jennifer. Yes. So this is to cover overages in our snow and ice account. I'd make, make a motion to approve the um, transfer from the general highway, the amount of uh, general highway uh, payroll account for to the snow and ice for 30,109.83. I'll second that. Um, I just have one question. So normally we pay for this out of free cash. Um, mm -hmm. So Kevin is okay with this he is. coming yep. out of- He is. There's yep. enough, okay. We discussed this with him earlier this year because we were trying to preserve free cash for some of the things we knew that would hit us, which was included capital. Yeah. Okay. All right. Further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried. Carolyn, did you second that? Yes, I did. I just wanted to verify that uh, it was okay because um, we normally pay for these things out of free cash. That's been the past process. And one of the things that we've run up against in the past couple of years is, in cash. is free cash. We have had some particularly capital is is we're using some free cash for capital so we're trying to to balance it somewhat no that's fine i just didn't want kevin to be stressed out um and it, if that's fine then that's fine he's always um, stressed okay. out. <laughs> well more stressed out than normal 
just take a ride down River Road and you can increase the stress. I know. Yeah. I know. <sighs> Believe me. I know. Yeah. So the warrant. Oh, can I? There hit? were a few changes to the warrant. Go ahead. I just wanted to hit on the uh, town of the old Deerfield Water item I'm anticipated, which I know we're going to kind of wait on a little bit, I think. Is that right, Casey? So you should explain it. Let me let me talk this over. So um, I have brought this up at finance committee, the joint meetings multiple times, um, but I, I wanted to bring it up more clearly today and that we have a um, an emergency need of pipe replacement through Old Deerfield, uh, specifically the spot that is ultimately ready to fail any minute um, is through the DA campus and out towards our wastewater treatment plant. Um, this pipe and manholes that go right through the center of, of uh, Deerfield Academy would be very difficult to change on any at any time, really, um, with all the things that go on at DA. Um, I've been talking with Kevin, uh, with Keith uh, Finan from DA and with the, several of the trustees. Um, they have offered, um, be, because this one summer coming up is really unique, coming off of COVID, they're not having any uh, summer programs at DA, so that the campus is gonna be pretty vacant. Um, normally there'd be all kinds of things going on up there. So trying to do a sewer pipe project right down the middle of their campus would be very difficult. Uh, Keith had asked if at all possible, we could tackle this work this summer um, and get it on an expedited uh, program to replace the piping going down Albany Road and, and down the hill out towards, um, out towards the plant and at least get beyond Deerfield Academy. If we could do that this summer, they would, uh, they would gift the town the money to do that work. Um, so we're in the process of making that happen. Um, uh, it's a significant amount of money, just under $400,000. Um, we have, um, as I've talked in other meetings, we have um, probably about $3 million worth of pipe work to do at that end of town. Um, Quite a bit of it going up towards Eagle Brook is in failure state too, or is going to be very shortly. Um, but this one area where it intersects with that campus so vitally right through the middle, um, they thought it would be the perfect time to do it. And they offered to pay the bill and, and I jumped at that chance to work with them to do that. So that's, you know, it's a very generous donation of them. And, and so we're moving forward trying to get that done. So um, behind the scenes, we've had um, our engineer firm, DPC, uh, put, a, put an estimate together um, for the engineering and the repair. Um, and we want the bids to go out very shortly to get in this time frame because the project has to be done mid-August. I mean, completely done. There may be paperwork and stuff to do, but we can't have people on the campus when, when all the kids come back. So Anyways, so we're rolling forward with that, um, but um, because it, it's not an item that the town is getting taxated for, you know, taxation for and um, paying for, it still is going, you know, we're still going to be paying it through the town. It's our, our pipe and our infrastructure. It needs to go before the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. So, um uh, so what we're doing is setting up a gift account and a general fund for uh, Deerfield Academy to fund this work, and then we'll pay the bills and, and manage the work through the bids. Um, but uh, so it's still an infrastructure project. And I guess my question for this board is, do we want to, I, I would really recommend instead of multiple items, I recommend that we put this amount that we know, I mean, we have $3 million worth of work to do. It can go on to that that uh, capital plan and can be stretched out for four or five years. It, it doesn't really matter, but I think that way we don't have to come back every time we decide to do a section and put it on at you know when it's past the time. And I think we know the work is there. Let's put it on the capital plan for the full amount, um, and and we're just going to get moving on this this part right away because we need to. So I I, I guess it's up. I wanted to get your advice whether we should put the whole thing on the capital plan since we know we have to do it and then you know tackle it as we can. 
I, I think we I think it should as being on the capital committee, I think it should go on the capital plan, but I think we need to fill out an application and yes, Kevin's already doing Kevin, that. Right. And and because um, we're doing this portion of it, it's not costing the town any money. I think we need to vote to move ahead and have Casey um, start the procurement process on this. And, and um, oh, okay. I just yeah. want to make sure that we're moving ahead. We don't want to lose oh, yeah. the, to the no, gift. Please. I mean, this money is not costing the town. I mean, we're and, on- And the it won't be there if we can't do it, so. Right. Right. So I just don't want to make, I want to make sure, yes, we can do all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. We can do all that, but this is critical to move forward because I don't want to lose the opportunity of the donation. Yes. The donation is based on us moving forward. Right. Casey, did you, you're muted. You're muted, Casey. <laughs> there you go. So I think capital's question may be, well, is this part of the plan? Well, the funding source is not the town's funding source, right? But it is it, and this literally came up, you know, a few yes. in in the form that we can read it is a few hours ago. So it's a push now to take this to capital, and that's one of the reasons I had been reading the capital improvement planning recommendations portion of the bylaw because. I I'm going it to leave no allowance for emergencies. Well, that's that's my issue. And that's why I said earlier that, that the Capital Improvement Planning Committee bylaws are a stranglehold on getting any work done in town. And it's very difficult to meet all these requirements because you don't know that they're coming. And especially with an emergency when it comes to critical infrastructure, I think there does need to we, be we did some... We did, in fact, try to make the, the bylaws more flexible. So yes. But I a recommendation is what we're going to be asking for, but we may yeah. get some arguments about whether this is part of the plan because we and don't that's fine. And, and we're then developing it now. And they yeah. can recommend not to do it. But guess what? We're going to do it anyway, because we need to. It's an emergency. And, and, and that, I will advocate that this is an emergency situation. And I would just, yeah, I mean, and the it, committee is reasonable. Uh, they are absolutely. And uh, the only thing I'm saying is just that the, the the, the, the working gears of it all when it comes to, you know, APR stuff or it comes, to, you know, certain things, not, it just feels like not every, it's not a catch all for everything. Unless it's a review backwards, that's fine too. I just feel like we, we need to be able to do the town's business when it comes to emergency infrastructure, um, you know. Oh, when, we have a road, when we have a road collapse, there's just nothing we can do. Yeah. You know, the CP, we can't Pipe wait collapse. for them to make or pipe collapse. We cannot make. We cannot wait for the recommendation. And so I, I would recommend that we would move on to the a recommendation to the to the capital improvement planning committee. And 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 I've talked to them about this already. You know, we've we've brought it up in, in many meetings, so they're aware it's coming. It's it won't be out of the blue. But I um, but I think we should put the whole amount on there, so that it so they know it's coming. And 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 then it's up to us as a committee and as a town to decide. Um, you know, multiple, all of us together, when we want to tackle the other critical infrastructure up there. And, and, you know, I think in the next few years, we'll have to come up with a plan to do that. But this right now, and then there's a, another section from where, where DA stops out to the plant that also needs to get done. But I think we can monitor that for the next couple months, you know, maybe get us through uh, the winter and then you know, get a plan for next year to start tackling some of that. We still don't have the numbers for South Deerfield, but I don't think there's anything super critical in South Deerfield proper. Um, we don't know we, yet. We don't know yet, but talking we with don't David, know yet. talking with David, there isn't anything like this pipe right now um, based so on- So here's the, the question. I, I think we should stick to just this pipe because right now it's critical. And if you want, if you want, CIPC to make a recommendation and you know we're we're up against it mm -hmm. if we want CIPC to make a recommendation we need to be a, very clear cut in what we're asking for uh, what we I can say at the end is we have other infrastructure out there that we know we have to fix we do not have a full estimate of what needs to happen but we do have a timeline I, and a, a critical need here but we do have a full estimate for south for old Deerfield we know already what needs to be fixed. And what so what I'm trying is. to say is how do you want to frame this? Because if you want a recommendation right away, you need to narrow it down to what it needs to be. 
what the recommendation well, you're actually vote. asking for is. I'm asking for I'm asking to tell them that there's three million dollars worth of pipe to do up there, and that we're working on uh, a free. Okay, gift then you're going to have to walk 000. me through the entire thing. I had I'll asked to Kevin to help us with just this. Here's yep. the problem: we have town meeting in a week, Trevor. Yep. Capital has a meeting tomorrow night. Yep. That has to be done, and yep. now I have another one to do based on Jeff's questions about this what appears to be the, a the land extra stuff is land years purchase. down the road i just need them aware that it's coming that it's there and so that's and a framing forever. of a you have to write it yeah that's what i'm asking forever how much time do you want me to dedicate in every other priority that i have to do this right now to do the uh, entire thing right now Casey, Casey, because I don't have that kind it's, of time. It's it's a number. It's the whole report is there. It's already a number. So you either put in four hundred thousand or you put in three million. I don't know what the difference is. Well, the difference I, is how you explain it to them I, to get I, what you want tomorrow night, I, or I, we I, have to set up another meeting. All right. No, Trevor. Trevor. Yep. I think what we do is is get through town meeting. We put in for the four hundred thousand. Uh, the immediate pipe that we need, are doing right now. And that once we get through town meeting, we submit to, to capital um, the, you know, the whole project, which would include South Deerfield. It would be the 3 million plus that's remaining up in old Deerfield, plus what we might potentially have in South Deerfield. And we submit it early on. So they have it, you know, sometime after town meeting. Because we, we, we will have the information on South Deerfield in the next, within a month, right? Mm -hmm. And so yep. that's the other question. Do you right. combine so them? Because they're all pipe work, right? Yes. It's all pipe well, work? Let's, let's okay. combine it and we'll prioritize the pipe work based on the final report from South Deerfield. If South Deerfield is not, uh, you know, if we, have, if we have $5 million, 3 million of it is old Deerfield, that's it's and it's a higher priority. We can we can prioritize the the parts that are falling apart, and 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 we can do a better job. I, rather than rush, and and have two submissions and make it confusing. Let's do the one one submission right now for the four hundred thousand that we need to move forward for, and then then we submit a, the total pipe project with a prior prioritization um, when we have the South Deerfield information. It'll ha have the same attachment though, Carolyn, that's what I had talked to Kevin about is we attach DPC's proposal so they understand. But what I we just say want is- them to be clear that if there's $3 million worth of work to do in old Deerfield, we're tackling under 400,000 of it right away because it's a gift. Right, and, we need to I, will, and I will explain that tomorrow night, Trevor. I just don't want it to get bogged down and not right. happen. Well, the because moment. here's the, they're gonna have questions about why we're doing this now and what they're gonna see the other stuff and they're gonna wanna chew on it. Yeah. But by splitting it out, it also gives us a chance to work on grants for mm -hmm. additional funding, whether it's from the vet, federal infrastructure uh, whether we can use a little bit of the oh, yeah. money we funding or something. So, plan to. You know, I, I know we plan to, but, you know, if we clarify that we got that $400,000 gift and the rest is we have to delay it a little bit so it gives us time to put our feet underneath us to get the grant applications and everything in. Yeah. Uh, but they got to be clear that this is an expense that's coming down the road. Yeah, that's yes. all I want to make clear. Yep. I, I will explain it to them to tre Trevor tomorrow. That this we also have to finish the application. We're going to have to do it if what Steve is or if Je what Jeff is saying is we have to do an application because this is considered an acquisition of land for the APR. That's another application that has to get done tomorrow. I know. So this is what I'm saying is if we focus the framing. I don't, I don't think we. If we focus the framework, we just say, okay, there's going to be more information. Right now, we don't have all of South Deerfield, but we estimate. Old Deerfield will be this. We want to focus on this amount of money for this work in Old Deerfield I'd because I think there's they're gonna it's gonna confuse them. I really do. I think it's gonna confuse them. I mean, I can't even get them to vote nineteen million dollars. 
straight up, nineteen million dollars. Capital has not been approved, approved a full it's on nineteen million dollar appropriation. That's already been approved by the voters. I know, but I, we don't have an actual vote from them, and Bond Council brought it up. So they. <clears throat> That's that's my issue is let's not make it confusing for them. Let's focus them. And Carolyn, if Carolyn, if Kevin and I can get something to them so that Carolyn can speak to it tomorrow night. I will. I will make sure. Then one of the things you just said it. And so did Carolyn, you know, we know we're going to have more of a project. We have we need to gather more information, but we also need the ability to start pursuing grants if they're available. And maybe they will be. I'm hoping. Let's not spin our wheels on the APR. Exactly. I, I now I have to ask council. I, well, we can, it's muddy enough in in that conversation that now I have to ask council. <clears throat> okay. It's, I don't know if it's land. an acquisition. It doesn't it's look like one to me. It's not. It's does. It's not something that they should re review at all. It's up to town meeting to decide not capital improvement planning. It's not a capital improvement. <laughs> it just isn't. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. We're getting- It could be considered land for a, land. I think he may be reading it as land for a public purpose. It's yes. not. Well, but, that's but, maybe where it is catching him as land. land for a public purpose. We're, we're, we are becoming a stakeholder in that land, in the conservation restriction. So um, it doesn't matter. Let's just, this is we're too much tonight. <laughs> We still got more stuff here. <laughs> well, the other thing is, is we got to go through the warrant and there haven't been a lot of changes to the warrant since we talked last week, because there were several changes that finance and the board requested I make last week. And a, a key piece of those was the personnel bylaw changes. So we separated two personnel bylaws out. So if you look at your warrant, I'm just looking at my report. So one thing, and I, I really appreciate all the hard work finance committee did yesterday. They put all their recommendations for articles on. Some of them I had from the financial review, but they did a review of the zoning articles and other incidental articles, and they made their recommendations. We've included those. We, you will see we did split the personnel bylaw holiday changes into two separate articles and refined the language on that somewhat. However, in review, as we were going through the warrant, it became apparent that there is a defect in the notification requirements for the gender neutral zoning bylaw language. Not, the Not for the bylaw. Right, it, it's, it's the zoning piece of it. So we missed a notification and after talking to council, she's advised that we pass that over and address it at a special town meeting in the fall. Article 16? Yes. And then, oh, I have two different screens going right now. And I, requested, and I requested a change, a lineup change. And so that's that's another piece. So we thank you for doing I that. I moved Carol. the municipal facilities. Thank you. That makes sense. From the bottom of the warrant to the middle of the warrant. Mm -hmm. And on the top of the zoning stuff. So that's perfect. Well, it makes sense. Yes. All our, select, our, our, all our selectman articles are. Um, Thanks, Jennifer. Yep. That's perfect. So we did, if you notice, over a period of time we've refined the language around some of the explanations. So because of COVID, it's forced us to put more explanation into the warrants so that it's easier for people to understand when they come to town meeting. And I got a bit of um, concern from the finance committee about the timing. And I think of, of when they're receiving warrants, I push a lot of information out. But one thing that I did say to them is we are, the how we're processing the warrants now is different than we used to do it two years ago because we didn't used to include all these tables and provide all this information up front the intent when discussing the changes that covid wrought with 
the moderator and council was to try to provide as much information so that people can make their decisions in a timely fashion in town meeting so that we can address the business that needs to be addressed. And so we've talked about it before. We have consent articles that cover various subjects. And those are pretty much explanations are provided. And those are pretty much refined. The class comp is included. The budget is included. The we changed a we made a slight language change on Article Six, the sewer wastewater treatment plant enterprise fund. We added the words and retained earnings before the rep at, before the comment as referenced in this article, and that was at the request of Brenda when she looked at it. You'll see that Article 9 Community Preservation does include that APR contribution for $13,000 as addressed between Jennifer and um, Brenda, the town accountant. Let's see. Everything else looked good. I think the only That's thing that we had was, we had a lot of questions last night about the zoning, but they did and I thank Jennifer for putting the recommendations in and then Brenda yep. reviewing them today. But what we've done is this is pretty much the structure we had before yep. with Looks a couple of, of recommendations added. So I think it's ready for the board to vote if you're so inclined yep. and sign off. We wanna be able to post this tomorrow. So if you could yep. come in and sign at your convenience, that would be very helpful. I make a motion And I would take the pagination off of it just so it looks like our past warrants. I make a motion to approve the warrant for posting for annual town meeting. I'll second, I'll second that. Um, I just had a quick question on Article 17. Um, uh oh, Carolyn. Oh no, no. I maybe I'm reading this wrong. These provisions should not apply to town-owned lots used for municipal facilities, which shall be required to have no less than 50 percent i mean is this the wording the correct wording it sounds it sounds like it's the wording that we worked on with council okay i hope that means we just okay and it, i know it says shall not and you think to yourself wait a minute what should we do i know i, know. <coughs> I just mean okay. they, they don't apply to town-owned lots used for municipal facilities Shall be required to have no less than. It says, it says they're um, no less than 50 feet. So, what I'm saying is, is that you have to have at least 50. Right. Feet. Okay. 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 Yeah. I just want to make sure and the right thing. I'm like, oh my God. Lexic way of saying something, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's very legalese, but you make a good point, Carolyn. I I've looked at it probably 50 times and I think you have too because I've sent out incarnations of this. Oh, I know I was just looking at it, but it could be you know, it's a long day, long day. This is my fourth. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about oh, it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I can ask her about that, but I did she did review it late this afternoon. Okay. And she did confirm that we need to pass over that one warrant article. Final okay. vote. I, I won't, I'm all ready then to vote. Okay, so we've got a motion on the floor. It's been seconded to approve the warrant. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? I, Carolyn Ness. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. Carolyn, did you make the motion? Yeah. Uh, I, I made the motion. Carolyn okay, seconded. Okay, thank you. Yep. I flipped it in my head, thank you. Okay. Still getting cross-eyed reading the uh, article. <laughs> and so we'll start working on motions. Um, once we get this posted, we'll start working on motions. Okay. Okay. Um, and you'll start to see the donations come out as well. All right. Okay. Uh, anything else, Casey? Uh, just that we'll have to work on the CIPC stuff. So I'm going to have to send Lisa an email tonight before I leave so that I can get it out while it's fresh in my head. I'm going to have to ask her about the APR and I'll ask her about the, the pipe replacement stuff. Okay. If it needs, I mean, I think 
how about we see what Kevin and I come up with and then we'll work with it. Sounds good. And then you can chime in Sounds if you want good. to add comments to the application, Trevor. I just had one. Well, we were going to provide that DPC documentation. Anyway. Great. Yeah, that's perfect. That's what I wanted them to have. Yep. Um, I just had one um, comment uh, about the COVID extension for the COVID money is October 29th now. So we haven't heard from FEMA yet, have we? No, we okay. have not. And I have sent emails out and I am not hearing from, I've looked on the portal. I've sent out emails. <laughs> Okay, no, I'm not. I'm, it's no criticism of you. I just oh, was wondering. It's just frustrating. We need to spend, we need to make sure that we're spending that down to zero. And I um, make sure that we uh, don't mix it up. So there's two different reports that we do. And FEMA, FEMA doesn't have a deadline right now. We have a third application in process. But FEMA's hold off, held off on doing their deadline. CARES Act has a deadline of doing a specific report by the end of the week. Right. So Brenda's been working on that. And they both, so what you do in your CARES Act is you report what you've requested from FEMA as part of your CARES Act report. So they sort of coincide and at the numbers match, but the approval doesn't match. So she's, what Brenda has been doing is reflecting what we've requested for FEMA as part of our CARES Act, but we still haven't gotten approval for it. I just so we continue to report. Okay, I just want us to be careful that our what we do with our ARPA money is separate what we do with the COVID because the COVID oh, money yeah. has more restrictions. There's less strings attached for the ARPA money, and I want to make sure we're using it for you know more one-off, one-time kind of economic related kind of activity. I think we should have a conversation about that. I think we should put this on the agenda and, and start chatting about it, but not until after 10. I, I agree, I agree. We can wait till the end of the month because I don't think we're gonna get a lot of information before the end of the month. So, um, but I, I want us to keep an, a, be real careful about the COVID money because I wanna make sure we keep a running total of that and then we actually spend it down because all of a sudden the deadlines are going to come and then we won't have it spent. Like, even if it's some little squirrely thing, I want to make sure we get it um, charged to that. So it's, it's, you know, we're not giving any money back. Okay. I'll talk okay. to uh, Brenda about it. Okay. Thank you. Have any public comment tonight? Nope. We lost all the public. <laughs> well, Christina's here still, but nobody else. I think, I think most of us are losing it. <laughs> yeah, we are. Or at least I am. I'm, I don't a long I'm, week. I'm not going to say it. Okay. It's been a long week. It's only been two days. I know. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I know. It feels like it's a Friday. Okay. All yeah, right. it, always, it always feel it feels that way after three day weekend. Doesn't Somehow it? it feels like a longer week. <laughs> it sure does. It sure oh does. My God. All right. Motion to adjourn. I will second that. <laughs> Any discussion? Yeah, uh, no. Yeah, I think I have a few more things. No. Oh, good night. <laughs> Once Thank you for all you guys are doing. It has to be voted on, so yeah, <laughs> too late. A vote, yes. All those in favor. <laughs> Carolyn, right. yes. Trevor, yes. Trevor, yes. yes. Yeah. From, yes. Right. Thank you, thank we you, Casey and now. Jennifer, for all you're doing. I really thank you, it. Jennifer. Thank, thank you, everyone. Everybody. Thank yep. you, everybody. Thank you. I'll see you. Bye, bye. Thanks, Christina. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank bye -bye. you, everybody. <laughs>